You bring your phone everywhere. Work, school, shh, the movies. Now you can bring it to an Xfinity store for an easy way to switch to Xfinity Mobile, a new kind of network designed to save you money. You can get up to five lines of talk and text included with Xfinity Internet at no extra cost. So all you pay for is data. It's never been easier to switch to Xfinity Mobile and keep the phone you love. Click here to see how. Sorry, I gotta take this. Restrictions apply. Limited to select mobile phones. Requires activation of a new line of Xfinity Mobile. Up to five devices per account. New Xfinity Internet customers limited to up to two lines pending activation of Internet service. Yeah, because the answer, the answer to why does he get a good life is because sometimes the devil gives people a really good life. And... <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to cut it before I got to the end of that. It's it. it just like, I um, thought we were going to cut it. And so they sometimes. have a good life. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. sign me up, devil. <laughs> like, where <laughs> you at, bro? I'll take one yes, of the if- very good lives <laughs> you have. <laughs> God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because an easy life will make you soft. I'm your host, <laughs> No Illusions, and sitting to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thank you. Uh, this was fun. This was fun. Just, Melissa Joan Hart's backstory makes so much more sense. <laughs> <than that. laughs> I'm, I'm really filled in all the gaps. I get it. <laughs> and sitting 4,942 miles to my right is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. But unfortunately, he's not going to be joining us today because apparently fucking his new wife in Greece <laughs> is more fun than making dick jokes with us. Which, wait, he brought, did he bring the grease with him? That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he fucks, he fucks in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> And as I'm sure you've already picked up, we were able to find a couple of stand-ins for Eli, each one half as talented as he is. So, <laughs> and joining us size. from the city, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may not know that, but that's a fat joke about Tom and Cecil. So, anyway, as I was saying, joining us from the city that auto completes when you Google number of annual murders in are our good friends Tom and Cecil. Oh, that's true, by the way. Go ahead and test oh, me no, on that. No, the cognitive well, just I killed three people on the way <laughs> here. <laughs> that's a practice killing. That's all that is. <laughs> Those statistics aren't no. going to make themselves. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Everybody's got to do their part. I get it. I get it. Uh, just in case, duck. Yeah. Uh, now, of course... As I'm sure our listeners know, Eli got married a couple of days before we recorded this, and we obviously want to start him off on the right foot. So, uh, Tom, yes, any uh, any marital advice you'd like to offer while we've got you here? <laughs> oh, so much. The, uh... <laughs> so much. <laughs> Eli, from the bottom of my heart, start squirreling away your money now. That's <laughs> <laughs> I don't care, buddy. Shoe boxes, whatever you got to do, <laughs> tuck it aside, keep it cash, and don't tell anyone about it. <laughs> you're a fucking and monster. That, I'm just saying you're a fucking monster. No, no, that was my toast. That was yeah, my toast. It. So it's, <laughs> No, that's terrible <laughs> advice. I, what I really mean is don't impregnate her. Yeah. That's what oh, I really Jesus. mean. Jesus <laughs> Christ. We're very pro-choice on this show, so it's... It'll be all right. So uh, tell us, Heath, without further ado, what will we be breaking down today? All right. We watched God's Not Dead. We did. One. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a movie that I understand it was stolen from Kelly Kulberg <laughs> and her screenplay called Rise, which means it's about a Christian student at Harvard being lynched by atheists. Now, I watched it twice. I watched it twice, and I did not catch that part, but odds are it was mid-climax at any given moment, so I'm sure you guys can fill in the blanks when we get there. It's very distracting. Figure it out. Uh, I, I, I jerk off to the newsboys, too. So. <laughs> you literally have to in this movie, because if you don't, the newsboys will jerk you off for you. <laughs> They are the jerking off of pop music, absolutely. And Tom Cecil, how bad was this movie? It's it's about as bad as uh, as pretending that Kevin Sorbo is an actual professor. I think it's that bad. (laughs) It's that bad. No no amount of acting can can break down that. Yeah, I believe I I believe in God before I believe Kevin Kevin Sorbo. Sorbo. 
<laughs> you get me a PhD written all over him yeah. in this thing. Nothing but gravitas. I'll tell you what. <laughs> this movie is only half as smug, though. As Kevin uh, Sorbo, the professor, who walks around <laughs> smug as fuck the entire movie. The movie attempts to reach that same level of smugness, yet containing that smugness still falls short. That was also a disappointing <laughs> lack of rape in this movie. Thanks very much. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Jesus. I was drinking you know, when you I said was, that. I man. was hoping that you would have given us another rape movie <laughs> where some plucky little kid gets you guys certainly have a type. You guys certainly have a type. The kid and then waves the kid at the guy while he's visiting him in prison, but instead we get to fucking watch PowerPoints. So thanks for that, guys. See, Appreciate it. In the elevator scene, I thought we were about to get that. That's there right, was Mark, a that moment. Is, that is fair. That is fair. Kevin Sorbo and uh, and the, the kid from uh, Blink-182 <laughs> are in the elevator together. And and, and it may actually, you know, I don't know. Somebody may fist somebody in the behind the scenes. You don't know. Right. It's implied. It it's implied. They, they're tasteful about it. I did think he was going to bounce him off those walls. I, did, I oh, really yeah. was like, he's going to show him what for in this If thing. he was, I was just going to start shouting, Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. <laughs> Someone was going down one way or the other. Yeah. <laughs> That's the important thing, yeah. Yeah, either he was going to get fucked or Janaid, one or the other. I would have oh, been Janaid. happy, but... Uh, oh, God. Unfortunately, no, we get... Well, we'll get there. Now, is there anything you guys want to nominate this movie for being the best at being the worst at? Ooh, uh, I'm going to say best worst African character. <laughs> this, <laughs> it's ridic- this guy is absurd. Every... Every director's note for this character is just never stop smiling. Yeah. Do not doesn't ma- we will learn this character is going to watch someone die right in front of him and he's still beaming like an idiot. That is all that this guy does. You're talking about budget Forrest Whitaker? <laughs> yes. <laughs> The most offensive African character since Vultures of Horror too. That's not that long ago, but yeah, he was who pretty bad. Um, I was going to say, uh, best, worst formulating an argument other than, no, uh, you are. That's what you do. That's what you sound like. <laughs> someone was going to call someone a duty head. It was going to happen. It's it was bound to happen. Right there. Um, I have one here. So, like, I would nominate it for Reverend with the Whitest Hands. I don't know if you <laughs> saw this while they were carrying out the the fucking stuff to the car if you stop there it looks like he pulled his like gloves off that had like latex powder or whatever on them <laughs> his fucking hands his hands look like bleached. I, I, I yeah seriously bleached i i and, and the rest of his body's all tanned it's super weird <laughs> it, it's almost as weird as his crazy fucking haircut like that guy the fucking reverend's haircut like his fucking blind mom cut it or yeah. something <laughs> <laughs> like with a pair of dull scissors it's unbelievable like, nobody would do that to themselves on purpose it's so funny eli pointed this out a while back every time we see david a.r white his hair is like 12 to 15 years back in time but done by a blind person we've watched even even back in the 80s he had 70s cuts it's incredible i i would nominate this for uh best worst depiction of a college experience that no one has ever had ever <sighs> no shit None of these people went to college. None of these people. None this is college went, as imagined yeah, by people exactly, who can't spell yeah, college. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. And there's such a clear anti-college message that never gets walked back at all in this film. It's incredible. Like, there's such an anti-education message that underlies this whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, and, and also, it, it clearly has uh, – it clearly shows that – the people who run college are liberal elites because mm-hmm. everybody in the movie is is ultra rich. Um, they 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 are you know they're they're essentially monsters. Every person all in the movie them. is a fucking monster. All of them. And then and then they're, they they show these giant offices held by professors, like this huge fucking rich mahogany filled <laughs> office. Right. Yeah. And you're just like, yeah, dude, fucking most professors work in a cubicle. They fucking yeah. they hope that they can get an office eventually. Yeah, with every a door that actually yeah. closes. All these professors have Anchorman's house, right? It's like yeah. it's like rich mahogany <laughs> yeah, and like exactly. leather bound books, yeah. and they stand like douchebags next to the roaring fireplace, <laughs> drinking their brandy. And you're like, what the fucking most professors? are like, I got a 93 Toyota Tercel. <laughs> I just reheated this Campbell's soup know, in the right? microwave. <laughs> I care so much. I, I stopped drinking out of cups. I have to drink out of this Tupperware bowl. <laughs> right? <It's just> like, <laughs> like, you're like, like your, your glassware or like old sauerkraut jars. 
<laughs> right, yeah, the, this guy was bringing in the big philosophy dollars. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I didn't hear once Kevin Sorbo say, do you want fries with that? In this whole movie, I was movie, surprised, I didn't hear too. A single I was time. surprised. Not a single time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they edited a lot of that yeah. out in post. <laughs> he never yelled any stage directions in this one either, but uh, well, kind of his signature thing. All right, well, I've been waiting to break this one down for a couple of years, so I don't know if I can wait much longer. That means we're going to take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll dig into all the who's on first base apologetics that are God's Not Dead. This summer... Watch as a plucky young Christian takes on the whole of established epistemology with nothing but the power of his faith. Well, yes, Professor, Comte makes a convincing argument, but as a counterpoint, I would like to submit, nuh-uh. Watch as dozens of unnecessary side characters are introduced and then discarded. A half tuberculosis of the clitoris? Do you know what this means, Doctor? Uh, nothing, because now we're finished with you as a character. Marvel at ethnic portrayals that would have seemed culturally insensitive in the 40s. I, I don't understand why all of my characters' lines are listed as angry snarling. Oh, you're a Muslim. I see. You're a Muslim. Witness D-list cameos who look like people who argue with the cashier at Walmart. Hey, look, it's the Menard spokesman and the guy from Swamp Loggers. Perhaps they can help. Look, lady, I have a fucking coupon. I done told you that coupon is expired. All that and more this summer in David A.R. White's An Argument I'm Pretty Sure I Won on Facebook, the movie. <laughs> and we're back for the breakdown. So this flick is going to start us off following Skippy to his first day of college. <laughs> Skippy. <laughs> and the character's name is Josh. I have him as Skippy throughout my fucking notes. I can think of him as nothing but... He's like Trent Reznor's fucking son. He's, yeah, he is somebody you just like. You look at his hair and you just want to beat him up. He's so smooth. <laughs> he's so smooth. He's like like he's got to pay the Italian kid down the road for the fucking hair that's in his drain, so he can like fucking weave it in. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's just so smooth. Again with the hair. He always comes every Wednesday. <laughs> Where is that deleted scene? <laughs> <laughs> like right away, I write down the very first note, music note. We are literally one chord into the music before I hate it. <laughs> so, true, so wait, man. you don't love the Newsboys? Oh, Did you notice this? All this music was the Newsboys. Does anybody else like the Newsboys? The Newsboys are in this movie. Newsboys, <laughs> Newsboys, Newsboys. <laughs> Well, uh, sp speaking of which, he's wearing a Newsboys <laughs> shirt sure he is. that also has the movie name and logo on it. Right? <laughs> so in this universe, the main character has already seen uh, this movie about himself. <laughs> and has a t -shirt That's about so it. amazing. That's fucking Inception level right there, right? Baby. Yeah, right? <laughs> God damn. It's like a series of mirrors all pointing together. Oh, <laughs> so funny. This movie fucking had an apologetics researcher, too. I don't know if you saw that yes. in the fucking... In the, I'm like, fucking, you read one book. You're not a researcher, dude. <laughs> have one book on your shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. And and also like right away. Okay, so we're we're seeing Skippy walk to his first day of college, but we're also getting the other eighty two characters in the movie, <laughs> <laughs> none of whom matter. Like just oh, throwing no, in little not snippets. Oh. They don't matter at all. They matter so non aggressive. Like it is aggressive how they don't matter. <laughs> they don't matter. You couldn't matter. Fucking nothing matters less than the other characters in this movie. Nothing at all. Not even the apologetics researcher. I will say this, like, like the fucking, uh, you know, we'll get, we'll get into all the different characters. I'm sure we'll, we'll cover each one, but the most useless one, in my opinion, oh, go. was do tell. the fucking Muslim girl. Like she doesn't do anything for herself except for get beat up and like shoved around and told what to do. But I will say this. I will say this. Caliente. That's, awesome. <laughs> that's, a, that's the right? hottest chick in the movie right there. Was My that Muslim goodness. for hot that you just had I'll there? tell you. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, I didn't say caliphate. I said oh. caliente. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of Caliente, too, we also meet as as Skippy's walking to school, his oh. his hot little blonde girlfriend. Yeah, crazy shows up. hot. Oh yeah, she is. emphasis on the crazy though. <laughs> yeah, right. This is the this is the least likable character in any movie, and I mean that in any movie. I'm counting Holocaust films. <laughs> She's a step above Gorbals. <laughs> she's just, awesome. She is the least <laughs> likable part. When she breaks up, it's like fucking great. Yeah. It's amazing. And I'm only lamenting when she breaks up with him. I'm like, man, he didn't get to fuck that. Because they're but he clearly move waiting on to the for Muslim marriage. girl. Like, and I, when I say fuck, I mean premature ejaculate. But you know what I mean. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, the first thing we see her doing is uh, wearing a backpack and carrying books. So, yeah, right away, I wasn't liking this character. <laughs> And can I, I, I don't know if you're going to get there, but I just kind of want inter- to interject here. When, when they're doing this first scene as they're walking up, fucking who the fuck registers for classes has someone else do that for them anymore, number one. Number two, who registers for classes outside? Like, that's where this movie starts. Well, and of course, the whole reason we have to get this registration thing that means nothing is so that, like, <laughs> we can get this whole you're wandering into the lion's den scene. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. He can't be looking up online reviews. He's got to go see a real person to warn him away from this. Yeah. Yeah. What the fuck? Well, again, this is this is a movie about college written by people yeah, who've people never, never attended been. a college. Yeah, never been. Never. <laughs> They've never even been a fucking student orientation. Like, so how do they register? Oh, yeah, with laptops outside. That's how they right. register. Yeah, that's Seems how it works. Like what they yeah. do. And what if it rains? I don't know. It's just that <laughs> all the laptops are ruined and nobody goes to school anymore. <laughs> Never rains in Louisiana. It's fine. No. <laughs> so, so yeah, this uh, this character, by the way, we learn it's his name is Josh Wheaton. Mm-hmm. I know. I know. How, how, about, how hard is it to not have it sound like a famous person? Like J- Josh Wheaton. Everybody knows. What were the other choices? Like, what about KJ Abrams? No. <laughs> that was too familiar. How about Barack Obama? No. It's, it's girl like that's close Jill to Crosby. <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> Yeah, they say it real fast, it's ridiculous. though. Yeah. Com- completely different name now. <laughs> so, and so what we're getting in this scene, of course, is that he shows up and he's like, for some reason, the only question this person has is, what is your humanities elective? He says, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> This is the only pertinent information that needs to be exchanged here. They just have so this guy awesome. set up to check and make sure you've got a humanities elective. And he says it's philosophy with Professor Radisson. He looks up, sees there's a, a cross hanging around his neck, and he's like, yeah. you sure about that, Jesus boy? <laughs> and he, and this is a college, again, in Louisiana. So he's saying this to everybody. Who, yeah. Who's not Christian at this place? So nobody, everybody gets warned to not take that class. And of course, from here we cut over to, uh, to redheaded chick who also doesn't matter to anything that happens in this fucking movie. We, we, we got in the habit of calling her Rocky Dennis. So, <laughs> uh, she had the lumpiest face I think I've ever seen anyone have. And uh and the very worst part of her is that she's a vegan, guys. Yeah, uh, a fucking uh, yeah. vegan. I mean, if you're already unattractive enough and now you're a vegan, guys, like, <laughs> well, she's a vegan and a humanist. Oh, that's yeah, true. Right. That she's is got- true. But the humanism literally doesn't come into it at all. She's essentially an a militant vegan throughout most of the movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> she she's got the bumper sticker that says meat is murder. Yeah. American humanist. Also, I heart Evolution. What? Who? <laughs> what? what? Like, I break for fossils. What are you talking about? Who does that? So, and like all the atheist characters we're going to meet, the, the redheaded chick is, you know, she just doesn't have her shit together at all. She's waking up late for work. <laughs> so true. It's so true. She had a real rough morning. Yeah, you, well, you know how it is when you're an atheist. You can't wake oh, yeah. up early yeah. in the morning. No rules, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I like that because she's late because her clock is out because like, Jesus turned off her electricity. <laughs> well, also because she has no absolute morality. It's oh, well, the that's right. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, that's true. That's, that's also why her GPS was stolen out of her car that morning, I guess. And 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 that, of course, is just so that we can have her calling her shitty atheist evil boyfriend. <laughs> right, what yeah. an asshole that guy is. Oh, yeah, to me, she, she goes, I need directions. So somebody stole my Tom Tom. My phone's not working. She says this, and then they show the phone, and it's off. <laughs> it is. Her phone's yeah. Just don't show us that. The problem is that it's off. And then <laughs> Dean Kane's like, all right, well, uh, I, I want butt sex if I'm going to use Google Maps. <laughs> for it, pretty much. Exactly. I, I like that the phone is off, but she's on the phone. She's talking him. to him, yes. She's on the phone, <laughs> phone with him. My working. phone's not working. <laughs> she said while calling him on the phone. <laughs> And so she's like, well, okay, no butt sex, but how about this? If you tell me where to go, I'm going to ambush. This is the actual line. I'm going to ambush the duck commander. (laughs) And I wrote, nobody ambushes the duck commander. (laughs) (laughs) But apparently that's her thing. She's a, a, a reporter, and she ambushes Christians and asks them how dare they love Jesus for a living. If she is a reporter... She is the worst reporter. She just yells at people stridently <laughs> and thrusts her iPhone at them. <laughs> With the microphone pointing towards her, by the way. 
and they're not even like it's not even that she's 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 asking good questions because she okay so first off she runs up to this church right so she pulls up to this church and out pops and this is funny because nobody in the room recognized him right so we're watching this this thing and and they 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 get to the door and we don't know who the fuck this guy is he's some jag off with fucking long hair and a beard with a with a uh, a very sort of milfy wife and he and he walks up and he's got like this bandana on with like a fucking american flag on it and he walks up to the door and she starts in- ambushing him and he immediately sort of identifies himself as a robertson so all three of us thought is he playing phil robertson and we didn't realize he's an actual robertson <laughs> yeah we had no idea I- I didn't know until right now. We had no idea he was an actual Robertson. I looked on IMDb. I was like, holy shit, that's a Robertson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, had, I literally just learning this yeah. right now. <laughs> Are you kidding? Yeah, no, it's a real guy. That's it's, one of the Robertsons? Yeah, he's that's one Willie of the guys Robertson. who drives around the quads and stuff on the show, evidently. Yeah. I don't know. i never seen it. I didn't know. And I love that this movie couldn't get one of the top flight Robertsons. It had yeah. to go with like the... <laughs> The Billy yeah. Baldwin of yeah, Duck they, Dynasty. They, they, <laughs> had to get Tubby Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which one's going to die of a coronary first? Yeah. We'll get that one. His, his life's bad as well. And then her question is just like, so you kill ducks then, huh? And you're just like, <laughs> Really? Duck That's what murderer. you asked him? Like, you you ambushed a guy who shoots ducks for a living to ask him if he actually shoots the yeah, ducks? Yeah, that was bizarre. She's like, so you're going to just double down on this? You like shooting ducks. He's like, yeah. I kind of... Ducks are my thing. Yes. <laughs> like, that's it. What the? That's fuck? it. It's like, uh, like it's it's literally the worst question you could ask somebody who is the duck commander. It. Well, It'd be like going up to the clit commando. And being like, <laughs> so, like clit? So, yeah, it's my thing. <laughs> I mean, I can never find it, but I like. <laughs> I like. I've been looking. <laughs> Jesus. I love that she thinks she's gonna like. I'm gonna ambush him, and she ambushes him in the sense that she surprises him. But she doesn't oh, yeah, right. ambush him in the sense that she has literally anything of value to bring to the argument at and, all. And look at how dumbed down her fucking questions have to be to make this guy look bright. I know. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, and then of course we have to we have to move from there. We got to meet uh, the, the dementia lady. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, God. We we started calling her. <laughs> so you can use that if you want. But I didn't know how to spell it from my notes. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> I had to write something down. So now we meet her and she's very clearly Alzheimer'sy and she has a daughter who is like, she's like, she was like hot before the heroin thing and now she's still (laughs) crying. Oh yeah, slopey face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Like she looks like, like she looks like a hot chick whose face melted. Like it's just got like this melted candle thing around the cheekbonular region. She's just all (laughs) face. She's like a reverse centaur. Like, (laughs) she looks all face. It's just all. She looks like Kirk Cameron's wife was in BoJack Horseman, and they threw her out. And, and and the mom, her dementia mom, could not be less her mom. They're not even the same species. They're no, not even close. No, Grayla looks like Thomas Jefferson let himself go. And she's got this, Why is your daughter so much taller and a different race than you? No, no just don't. What did you call the daughter? Worm lips? Or uh, she, she looked like she had giant fucking leech lips. You know what I mean? Like they're just like these pulsating weird things that had a mind of her own. And her mom had a face like a foot. I enjoyed I enjoyed the leech lips. I thought that was I thought that was a good touch. There's some use to that out there. Put more collagen that, in there. Yeah, exactly. There is some use to leech lips. I'm not totally down on the leech lips. You know what I mean? That's how you get rid of AIDS. It's That's <laughs> oh, my God. So now, of course, it's time to meet Hercules. Hercules! Hercules! <laughs> yeah, so we meet Kevin Sorbo, who looks like Men's Warehouse hired a 90s porn star. <laughs> 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 horrible. <laughs> horrible. Did he, now, guys, did he have... Patches on his elbows because yes, I don't remember. Yes, he absolutely he did. had elbow okay. patches. Okay, all right. I just, want, I just wanted to check. Just wanted to check. <laughs> he did. <laughs> they did not miss a single fucking cliche. And he comes. Did he in have a here. pipe at any point? Oh yeah. wow! Maybe like they missed one. Oh, Maybe shit. one. Uh, and and I know if David A.R. Like White's listening, he's like, "Fuck pipe, pipe." <laughs> <laughs> Next movie, damn! I wanted to do the whole Mister Peanut thing, and now I really missed it. Yeah, no top hat, no monocle. They fucked this all up. So, so he's the philosophy professor. And he don't take no shit off, no engines, and, and <laughs> he has like day one. The first thing they throw up there, he's got a list on his whiteboard of famous atheists. That's how he opens up uh-huh. philosophy one hundred and one. Yeah, and he goes like, okay, what do all of these brilliant people like Ayn Rand all have in common? 
And, of course, the black kid goes, uh, they're all dead. And I only bring this kid up because his name is G-Dog. G-Dog. Yeah. yeah. I-, I was hoping to have a human being named. Nope. G-Dog. <laughs> I love that they go out of their Standard way to be fair. like, he says, so what's your name? Oh, it's fucking G-Dog, bro. So <laughs> you're just like, wait, what? Nobody Again, does that in fucking college. Just like this is a movie about college from people who've never been to college. That is a black kid written by people who've never met black people. Yeah. Right. Well, right. I feel like this is what black people would say. Let's say G-Dog, bro. <laughs> like, okay. Just- Throwing dollar bills at the podium. <laughs> what the fuck's happening? He fucking rolls up a blunt in the front row. <laughs> Give him a grill. Give him a grill. He'll look more authentic. Oh, what do they say? Authentico? What do they say there? I don't know. <laughs> and again, this is the only function that this kid will ever serve. It's not like we're introducing a character. It's not like G-Dog has some function. The only reason he's there is to stand up and say, my name is G-Dog yeah. because he, David A.R. White is a horrible, horrible racist. <laughs> Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yep. Speaking of which, let's move to the next scene where we meet David A.R. White and his black friend. <laughs> <laughs> and David A.R. White, in all the movies, with he is never dry. He, he, <laughs> is wet. he looks like wet Muttley in every single movie. Wet his Muttley. trailer is just a rainforest. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> He always has this pallor to him like his liver is failing. You know, like you, just, <laughs> yes. like you look at him and you like you immediately want to call an ambulance for him like he needs a transfusion. <laughs> but yes, and this is a, this is the most useless of the side plots in this movie is that Which is he's saying two- something by the way. <laughs> oh that yeah, yeah, right. Something. That's <laughs> right. It's the most drugs in the Olympics, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll get to them later. They're the comic relief apparently including when a character hor- dies horribly for no fucking oh reason. Oh my god! Jesus. <laughs> this is like they, they when they come out, it's it's lethal weapon like thirty four and a half. <laughs> You're just like, all right, no one cares. No, yeah. no one. The African guy is definitely too old for this shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Me too. And then, then we got a- I kind of was hoping that the African guy was going to pair up with a Chinese kid and they would do a rush hour takeoff in the middle. <laughs> or do the Muslim chick. <laughs> And, and if you think about it, that would have been a way to make this movie take a less racist turn, ultimately. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So now we got to get back to Sorbo trashing God. And then he says, hey, you know, in philosophy, we have to talk about God and stuff. Unless, of course, everybody's willing to write on a piece of paper, God is dead, and sign their name to it and pass it <laughs> to the side. stupid thing to say. God, it's so angering. It's so maddening. Okay, I'm a philosophy major, right? There wasn't a fucking – there was barely any classes we talked about God unless he was in the fucking syllabus. Right. You know what I mean? Like you don't talk about it unless the fucking the, – the philosopher himself talks about it. There's a fucking first off, a philosophy degree is a parrot degree. It's not even a real degree. It's a degree where you read fucking something someone else wrote and you write a fucking book report on it. You don't get to think as a philosopher. Don't pretend you get to think. You get to write a bunch of goddamn book reports. That's what you get to do. All right, Stephen Hawking. So fucking don't pretend that there's some fucking vigorous debate in philosophy classes because there are. It's fucking it's just a a guy who's yelling at you to fucking read more. That's it. (laughs) That's pretty much it. Yeah. Well, and, and but now here's the thing, though, is that what? Oh, we're, oh, first of all, this would never fucking happen. No goddamn philosophy professor would do this and, and keep his fucking job. But the other thing is we're supposed to be thinking to ourselves like, oh, my God, what kind of school would force students to sign some kind of declaration of their beliefs in order to be a part of the school? Kidding, right? and like this is again, it's you do this. No, it, uh, uh, it's not us. It's you. That's the, this ent- movie's entire fucking argument. But of course, Skippy <laughs> just can't make himself do it. Right. He really can't. It, I know he's he's got that he's got the strength of the moral convictions of his jelloey jelloey back. That's what he's got. <laughs> he's having this the pen is blue moment yeah. where he tries to yeah. write it. He won't do it. Yeah. He won't do it. My hands won't make the letter shapes. <laughs> When his whole and, and and he and he frames it in this way is like, well, you know, we're gonna do this so we can get this out of the way and move on to bigger, better subjects. It's like you control the subject yeah, matter. Right. Right. You're the professor. <laughs> That'd be like if you got in my car and I'm like, look, I need you to sign this piece of paper that says we're not taking the freeway. (laughs) I'll tell you what fucking roads I'm taking. I'm driving. I don't need you to sign off on my fucking route. And that's the thing. This professor, he wants to skip the entire discussion of whether God exists. And then he has his very first assignment is 
David Hume and well, Descartes and Discourse on Method by what? Descartes, which concludes that God exists and is not subject exactly. to skepticism. <laughs> what exactly. are you? I it's mean, so funny because Descartes is fucking totally fucking in God's camp. Yeah, it's absolutely. awesome. It is super awesome. So, but okay, so but the turn here is that he can't sign the paper, which means that everyone has to do the oh, hard God. part of the class that everybody hates, and that and and Sorbo's going to knock thirty percent off of his final grade if he can't convince. Convince the class that God exists over the next three classes. Right. That's the plot of this movie. This is like the, the you think you can ski better than me of this yeah. movie. <laughs> <laughs> he only gives him like, he's like, all right, I'll be giving you like a tiny bit at the end of the next three classes, which is bullshit. Josh should get 92% of each class <laughs> as far as I know from David Martin. Actually more because it's Louisiana. You yeah. should get like 99% of it. <laughs> totally. Un- that's ridiculous. That's what David Barton told me. And so like after class, of course, he runs into his super hot girlfriend who also also doesn't want him to debate this professor and th- no hold on now hold on now yeah, she got- does something way more egregious oh. than that tom what <laughs> she, did she do this set me off i'm still mad i was yelling in the car on the way to the studio about this <laughs> by myself <laughs> she commits a sin so grievous that had he shot her right in the face it would have only touched the pain that she should she took cake Right off his tray. Oh, Did you guys see that? Put it Pulls back. It right They're off standing. The plate. Put back. his cake back. Put it back. <laughs> they are standing in line at the cafeteria. What kind of monster does <laughs> <is> that? <laughs> <laughs> He reaches out and puts a beautiful slice of chocolate cake onto his tray. She looks right at him and bloop, puts it right back. I, mean, I would fucking curb stomp that bitch. In <laughs> I would rather hug hug a Nazi that has skinned the Jews. <laughs> Uh, that is that is the only offense a woman can commit. You take my cake? You take Jesus my cake? Right. You can skin my children. You take my cake from me? Unbelievable. Anyway, and that's sorry. the same scene yeah. where she says, "I have planned out Our the next, next 50, 50 years. years." Yes. The next 50 years and it doesn't involve cake? <laughs> you got I got 5 decades with you, you fucking shrew, and I don't get cake? <laughs> Tom, did you get your cake uh, in the divorce? Did you get to keep that? <laughs> <laughs> I hope I hope that was part of the settlement. So, I'll give you the uh, kids, but I'm keeping this. <laughs> <laughs> the cake is mine. <laughs> but then we get to we we have to and this girl we have to talk. We already mentioned her, of course, as the most useless character. But this is where we meet the Muslim girl. Yeah, yeah. And okay, so this For is no how reason. little they decided to know about this shit this character when we first meet her her dad is making her put on a hijab right the face covering she's wearing a like a t-shirt that clings to her tits and has short sleeves but dad is yeah, worried yeah, about but the hijab a, <laughs> yeah right right and tight jeans yeah, yeah. right right yeah, keep talking i'm almost there guys <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna call this up now not I just, yeah, about it, all right yeah, Think yeah. i'm gonna need a minute <laughs> yeah. not two just one <laughs> and, and her dad uh steroids david tell is pissed about <laughs> everything <laughs> She talks to what he thinks is a lesbian at one point, and yeah. she doesn't have the yeah. scarf on for a second. But he, he's fine with the translucent T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. You're like, uh, yeah, right. I love too that they cast like the most intimidating, yeah. angry-looking That's man fucking, they could find. It's like angry Ben Kingsley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need a Muslim who could possibly look real terroristy. <laughs> What do we have? Can we actually get somebody from Guantanamo Bay here? Can we cast somebody right from the bay? He, no? he might as well have been holding dynamite plungers when we saw him. Yeah, those they were going for that. And her name's Aisha, which is wonderful. She's named after Muhammad's nine-year-old fuck buddy. Yes, Fantastic. Nice. <laughs> and my music note for the scene was, Christianity is good. Islam is stupid. They're totally different. Not at all is the this same the scene, thing. Is this, now, refresh my memory. Is this the scene where the random person just walks up to her and says you don't have to wear that thing around here yes yeah she's like you're beautiful so, yeah that's one of those things that you're like everything is sacred all your religion as as a christian is super sacred but these other people have this different culture and you don't have to pay attention to that at all you don't have to you don't have to give that any credence whatsoever you can just right. walk up to them and say hey you know that really holy thing you do who gives a fuck yeah. you're a real pretty person what the right fuck? It, it'd be like walking up to a christian like a woman like wearing a, a cross you know, hanging between her tits and being like, your tits would look way better without that cross. <laughs> Wait, you're it's saying so that offensive. like it's bad. It's so it's... offensive. <laughs> like, when you shave your pubic hair in the shape of a cross, I can barely eat your pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but if I flip you upside down... <laughs> 
you have to 69 to make this satanic. It's like atheist dinner. (laughs) Christian devil. Christian devil. (laughs) Why does it say 999 on your... No, it's not. But I, I love to, again, this is, I, I always love watching in these movies where they have to have non-Christians say what's wrong with Christians or what they don't like about Christians because they have no fucking clue. So they're right, like, right. I know the Christians seem happy and holy and better than us. <laughs> anyway, you want some ice cream? Come on. <laughs> no, what? He's got, he's got no, he's, he's got no counter. He says, I know they all seem happy, but they're not worshiping God the way they should be worshiping God. Yeah. Only we worship God the way we worship God. Right. Which is apparently a bad thing to think, according to this movie. Right. Unless it's there. And anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think one of the things that they're trying to say, I think in this scene and in many other scenes is that the Christian God wants you to worship him, but the Muslim God demands you to worship him. And I think that they're trying to draw a distinction between Christian and Muslim faiths in that way. Well, I like that. That makes sense because the the Christian God asks real nice, <laughs> but then also says you'll go to hell if you don't. Yeah, like, yeah. It's, hey, I mean, it's, like, it's like saying like, admittedly, there's some fine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, look, if you don't clean your room, please clean your room or clean your room. Either way, if that room isn't clean, yeah, no, yeah. I'm going to light you on fire. <laughs> <laughs> the room gets cleaned. Yeah. Yes. Yes. But Christian God well, is clearly the more polite one about lighting people on fire. And, <laughs> and, and so this is also where our hero meets David A.R. White, the, 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 the blonde surfery yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so, so Josh, the, the character that, uh, that got challenged to the debate wanders into the church to pray about it. And David A.R. White, Pastor Dave, sees him there. And I'm sure he was called Pastor Dave because this guy's such an idiot that when they call his character <laughs> a different name, we've seen him in a bunch of different fucking movies and his name is always like his last name is White or his first name is David in almost all of them. Yeah. So he wanders up to this college kid with this totally you want to try some butt stuff kind of a uh, an attitude about the about the approach like you uh, try you want to continue yeah, right? Oh, yeah like right it, yeah. <laughs> just the, like oh, guys holding hello. a master's class <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to register for this one. <laughs> <laughs> So this, so of course he tells Pastor Dave all about the challenge that he's going to have to defend God in front of all his um, classmates or whatever. And then Pastor Dave offers up some super objective advice about how it'd be great if he brought more people into Pastor Dave's empty ass church. Yeah, and yeah. he says that he <laughs> says, know, right? You need to do this because students in Louisiana might never hear about Jesus. Otherwise, Although, yeah, no, I, yeah, that's, that's the that's best part of the whole thing. Yeah, without it. He says, like, how many people in the class? Like, 80. And he's like, how many of them are going to go to church? Like, none. Yes. <laughs> Except me. I'm the only one that's any good around here. <laughs> All the rest of those fucking dirty, filthy fucking heathens. <laughs> in Louisiana. Yeah, right. So, Even the alligators down there are Christian. <laughs> Well, they're thanking God right now. Anyway, it's been a tasty time to be an alligator in Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> so, and of course, now he's got to go back to his dorm room because because all the advice that Pastor Dave can give him is is some Bible verses to read. So he goes back to his dorm room to read the Bible out loud to us. <laughs> Bingo, check. <laughs> yeah, right. I love that he doesn't just Google that shit like everybody else would do. Be like, I uh, read. Luke, fucking whatever, the whatever. Like, All right, I'm Google that shit right now. And then you don't even have to leave. I'll do that. Yeah, while right. We're on here. my phone, right have... here. Yeah, he's probably like, got a Bible app on his phone. Even. You would think he would have a Bible in the church he's sitting. <laughs> at. Like he's got to go home. It's like, oh, I'm at church. Read this Bible verse. Where will I get a Bible? <laughs> <laughs> in the church. Well, and, and it would make so much more sense if he just read it out loud right then, because then we wouldn't have to have this really super awkward homoerotic moment where he texts Pastor Dave at 1.19 oh, okay, a.m. <laughs> super weird, bro. <laughs> when, when did he get Reverend Dave's phone number? Is that normal? Know, yeah, right? Dave, they didn't exchange, like, at the real Reverend Dave. Let's do this. Game on. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it seemed like they were strangers, right? Am I getting that? They yeah. were strangers. Because yeah. yeah. it seemed they were, like they were strangers. Strangers, and then strangers. the next moment he's texting. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I thought, he can't be texting the, the guy that night. He's got to be texting his pastor at home who, you know, raped him when he was nine or something. <laughs> also, a small thing. When you, when you see the phone to get the text, the phone says it's November, like November 2nd. So this college starts the year in November, <laughs> according to this movie. Uh, Whatever, it's fine. Awesome. Yeah, well, I also love the advice that Pastor Dave gives him. It just says, don't try to be clever. <laughs> it's like... Uh, yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> <Pull> it <down. laughs> 
Advice taken. <laughs> <laughs> so now we've got to go back to redhead cancer girl. Oh, I spoiled oh, it. Yeah. yeah, we already yeah. knew from the face <laughs> that it was made of melanoma. <laughs> so we're good. You know, I, I will say... Cecil and I were surprised that she ended up with cancer. We thought she was going to end up with an abortion. Yeah, we seriously we, thought she was going to be pregnant and needed an abortion, no. or she was going to have an abortion. I get it. We were we were pretty sure that that was the case because it would be a nice. It would be a. I think they missed an opportunity to dovetail that with the Mita's murder. Thing. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, and I'm, again, if David A.R. White's listening, he's like, "Fuck, <laughs> no. he's kicking himself again." And, Put it in the third one, guys. <laughs> Put it in the third one. The atheist gets pregnant. They, when, they'll never work. When Kevin Sorbo <laughs> comes back as a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love the exchange here, too, where we, we learn that she has cancer. The doctor's trying to tell her. Mm-hmm. And he's like, all right, so, uh, yeah, have a seat. Um, you have cancer. Hold on, hold on. She stops him, like, right in the middle of the word cancer. Hold on, uh, Angry Birds, just one second. She takes <laughs> <Yeah. everyone. laughs> like You were saying, you have uh, cancer. And then her, her response is like, yeah. This uh, this week isn't good for me. That's not. Yeah. We... <laughs> well, that's that's cool because that was her boyfriend's response later. I know, yeah. right? <laughs> well, I like too that the doctor tells her he doesn't tell her where the cancer no, is, it's just, just where it has spread to. It's cancer like, of the body. Yeah, yeah. He's like, you've got cancer, and it's in your li- and it's spread to your lymph nodes, and it's metastasizing. Yeah. Okay. Well, what's its point of origin? <laughs> like, where's the primary that cancer? Oh, no, it's, it started in her atheism. Oh. It's, 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 <laughs> It's malignant atheism. You have cancer of the cancer. spirit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cancer of the soul. And and so the Dodger might as well say, God is punishing you. Yeah. For eating too many vegetables. And and, yeah. and fucking with the duck commander. God has yeah. smoked <laughs> you. That'll teach you to ambush the duck commander. <laughs> Nobody asks the hard hitting questions like, Do you kill ducks, duck man? <laughs> So then, of course, we got to go back to Josh and his bitchy girlfriend, um, <laughs> and, and, and I guess he. This is where we learned that he got her Newsboys tickets for the um, for her an- for their anniversary. This yeah. is going to be. Hey, did pivotal. you guys know the Newsboys were in this movie? <laughs> I love the Newsboys. I don't know about you. Newsboys, <laughs> huge fan. <laughs> love the Newsboys. There's like an Australian one. I didn't know that. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Strange. I was just impressed they didn't call it the big concert yeah. because <laughs> just the movie done. there's no it's the big concert it's the college the rock university and roll I, yeah. I'm more I'm more impressed there's there's an important black man in this movie <laughs> well semi important, important anyway yeah <laughs> so three three fists is important as the other characters as the white characters but uh, so and and then we get this great movie trope right where she like she yanks him and the apologetic books fall out of his backpack <laughs> like. Oh. Spring loaded in yeah, like right, eight right. directions, yeah. And she reacts like it's all like gay amputee porn or something. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it really does. It's like it's so guilty looking. Yeah. It's like a bag of dildos yeah. just yeah. fell out and just like splayed across. Like, There's still fucking luby. Caught him right, browsing like fucking space dicks or something. <laughs> <laughs> And I gotta say, as bitchy as the girlfriend is, though, she is correct in the degree to which this doesn't fucking matter. I mean, like, she keeps telling <laughs> yeah, yeah, him, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you're pissing away your time, you're supposed to be, like, studying for other classes, this is, you're antagonizing your professor, this is not a good idea. And she is right, she's just saying it bitchy. That's how they make her wrong, is just by making her say this in a bitchy way. Hey guys, I think you guys are being a little hard on her. She's got a lot invested. They've been they've been dating since they've been twelve. Apparently, so guys, they're pretty invested in this relationship at this point. She is all in until she is all out. (laughs) We've been together since we were twelve. I've planned out the next fifty years. Peace. Yeah. Yeah. Oh wait, you argued with an atheist professor. I I, think. God, can you imagine what she would do if he ate cake? (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. She'd fucking shake that fucking kid. It'd be like girl with a dragon tattoo or something. Yeah. <laughs> She'd fucking honor kill him. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck? So now we've got we got to get our comic relief. This is where we finally learn that Salt and Pepper are gonna head to Disney World, <laughs> <laughs> and it's in their awesome, amazing shirts. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So and and this is so insulting to like the African guy. All he wants to do is go to Disney World, and he's just amazed by everything. He's like, "Oh, the toilet flushes is like crocodile <laughs> dundee and shit." <laughs> wow, your women aren't raped on the street. <laughs> That's amazing. Crazy. So where do I get my AIDS? That's <laughs> <laughs> You must have a lot of virgins to fuck. And, <laughs> and so, but of course, they're, they're about to go to Disney World, but damn it, the car won't start. And just to give you an idea how bad they are at doing movies, 
<laughs> they, like very clearly the starter and battery are operating just fine in the car but that's but the no. first thing he fucking says is might be the battery no because then it wouldn't Ab- do stuff absolutely not but keep trying over and over <laughs> 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 try to turn over right it's like vogel, 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 vogel. Turn on? do you think it's a flat tire do you think a flat <laughs> tire is the problem with the starter <laughs> no but no. they don't even try to jump start it. they think it's the battery and nobody's like got triple A or jumper cables. Just like I don't know, get a new car. I guess. Frankly, <laughs> <Like, laughs> he's like, oh, can the license plate it? expired sure. on this one. I've so, got a triple A uh, yeah. battery. Is that helpful? No, no, no. So yeah, so now, but he says, I guess we'll have to rent a car. And 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 the guys, and the African guys, like, but how will we get to the rental place? He's like, oh, they'll bring it to us. And he's like, the toilets flush, and you can bring it. Yeah. <laughs> On the Inamatica! <laughs> they have children and they're not soldiers? That's amazing! <laughs> How many baby hearts will this cost me? <laughs> you can cure cancer and you don't have to eat an albino kid? That's what? amazing! Oh my god. Well then where did you get those hands? <laughs> <laughs> And at this point, I really wanted it to turn into like an interracial rom com about these two characters going to Disney World oh, yes. together. Did not happen. Very, maybe in part three, we'll see. That's, that's what we're hoping for. Yeah. So now it's time to go back to Sorbo's class. This is this is the second time, and this is going to be. We're going to skip the class altogether so we can get straight to round one of the big philosophy debate that has no philosophy in it. Uh. <laughs> uh. Yeah, this is painful. This is painful to watch, and this argument. His argument here is uh, essentially someone wrote it down in a book and it might have been kind of sciencey back then and right. therefore God exists. <laughs> well, yeah. but he's got this like complicated PowerPoint presentation no with full shit. animations and shit. Yeah, the problem is he blew his budget on graphics. And <laughs> <the> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, and the other part of his argument is that the Big Bang Theory is Genesis 1. Oh, They're the bet, same. Yep. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. what you would expect if if a god were to say, let there be light, you'd expect exactly what happened in the Big Bang. That's the entire argument. And and, and look, I know this is kind of minor, but it, it, uh, it was like 400,000 years between the Big Bang and there being visible light. There were no like free atoms for the light to move. Let there will so. be light very slowly. Oh, I see. I see. <laughs> there will be light sometime. Let there be light eventually, yeah. God is an ent. A lot of people don't yeah. know that. But oh, God is an ent. <laughs> Yeah, I'll explain why he never knew, uses his dick correctly. So, <laughs> but that's that's the the opening salvo is of his argument. But because they realize this is too boring to sit there and listen to, we have to cut back to. <laughs> it's like, cut away from this. Yes, very advanced PowerPoint. Yeah, and this is the whole point of the movie. But even that, they're like, no, but this is pretty. I mean, I know this is what this movie's about, but it's pretty fucking boring. So they cut to the, I guess, more interesting part where. Uh, Pastor Dave and 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 the uh, the African guy are like getting all pissed off because they can't go to Disney World. That's essentially, but they're just arguing back and forth about not even arguing. They're just like one guy's like, "Hey, it's amazing in America. People aren't dying." The other one's like, <laughs> "Man, I wish we could get to Disney World. Hey, isn't it great that we didn't see a dead body today? <laughs> <laughs> could be in Chicago, guys. Come on, it could always be. Yeah, no, right? <laughs> and then we get back to Skippy's apologetics cartoon or whatever. <laughs> Apologetics cartoon, <laughs> and I love to like. Okay, so like he's he's making his argument, and then one of the one of his classmates raises her hand, and she says like, "But in his book, The God Delusion, <laughs> biologist Richard Dawkins says this yeah. quote that I have memorized. <laughs> yeah. You know, like people do, <laughs> right? Well, especially like freshmen do. Yeah, yeah. right, right." Right. <laughs> like, I, oh, I'm a, I'm a freshman sitting in a fucking big lecture hall, like, where my only goal is to fall asleep and not have anyone notice. <laughs> like, all I'm here to do is sign the intake sheet. That's the only reason I attended this thing. Well, he, he says something like, well, uh, if, if God, if Dawkins asked that question of who created God, then I can turn it back on him and saying, well, if, if the universe created you, who created the universe? And I'm thinking, why is it gotta be a who? Well, right. That assumes yeah, I, your premise. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even understand that question. I, yeah. like, who created? It, I, I didn't even. I didn't even understand the question because it doesn't need to be answered. It, exactly. Like that, that that's the part of this that makes me crazy. Is like he keeps he keeps his his counter arguments keep being questions that don't require answers. Yeah. He, he just he's he constantly he's like, well, if it's not this thing, then it must necessarily yeah. be the other thing. And it's like that's not how this works. No, nope. yeah, it's constantly an either or fallacy. Right. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. We, atheists don't have to explain how things start. We're just saying it's not the God of the Bible. It's literally. 
any other explanation. We get all the other possibilities. Yeah, right. All, all <laughs> except for true. Magic we, we also just Carpenter. get the explanation of, I don't know, we haven't figured it out yet. Uh, well, right. Well, right. Right. I'm not sure. That's a great question. I hope someday we figure it out. Probably wasn't space magic, though. <laughs> <laughs> Almost certainly. And, and like his redirect is basically all of, I know you destroyed my argument in a single sentence there with a reference, but you quote quite do. So <laughs> <laughs> I believe science and Jesus are tied now. And, and, and then of course, so Sorbo is getting a little pissed about all of this now that some of the students seem to be uh huh along. So he throws down some Stephen Hawking on him oh. as, as philosophy professors are wont to do. <laughs> I love that scene, too, because he's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me just invoke this argument from authority, one of the simplest fallacies that any philosophy professor should be careful to guard against. And then he's got like he's got like a fucking it just so happens to have this particular quote written down in his book, like his book. Like he fucking he already knew exactly where this kid was going to go, like fucking Batman style, knew exactly what the Joker was going to do. And then he fucking he's like, OK, I've already fucking planned for this contingency. I've written a quote from Stephen Hawking down in my binder. And then he drops the mic like Stephen Hawking would because Stephen <laughs> Hawking can't actually it. It sort of just falls out of his hand. Boom, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> and uh, this is where we learn that Stephen Hawking is apparently the world's most famous scientist what? and yeah, I love the that. greatest scientific mind in all of history. What? Where are these ranking boards that these Christian movies use? They, have, they know the greatest ridiculous blank thing in every one of these I don't know how they do it. Well, and as if this, like, philosophical smackdown here isn't ridiculous enough, now we get, like, Sorbo catching him up in the hallway to rough him up a bit. Okay. I know! Like, fucking see yourself out of a job the moment you put your hands on a kid. No shit! Jesus Christ. He is so mad. The kid is doing exactly what he told him to do. Right. The kid is like, <laughs> he's like, I bet you won't do this thing! Burdu challenge time! And he's like, all right, uh... I'll go ahead and do that thing. How dare you do that thing? I will fight you. You're a mixed message machine, bro. I don't know what you want from me. It does Hercules out on him, though. The right his shoulder. That's it. Just going back to his roots. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> this is all. This is also where we learn about the. He, he complains about the pre-law thing. He's like, "Oh, what's your major? Pre-law? Yeah. I looked it up. They don't award diploma. Yes, they do. They absolutely do. <laughs> Pretty much all the majors can be pre-law. That's ridiculous. Go to one college and find out. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I love it. He's like, you, you're, you, you majored in, you're saying you're majoring in pre-law. We don't do that. And then how would he write it? Like, what, yes. is it just a fill in the <laughs> blank major? I, like, I'm majoring in scuba diving. I don't even care if the school <laughs> offers scuba diving. I can fucking write down whatever I want. <laughs> you come to class, you're like in fucking any class with a fucking snorkel in your mouth. It's like, yeah, I know, this is philosophy, but I gotta breathe through this thing. <laughs> I don't even know what the prereqs would be to get to the major that I've selected that you don't <laughs> offer in order to achieve. But well, I'm fucking what? Well, I, and this is, of course, all to build up to Sorbo saying, like, and if you make me look foolish in that class, I will make it my personal mission to destroy your oh, future. God. Like, that's so uh, atheist of minute. <laughs> yeah. What? Philosophy 101 professors can torpedo your uh, entire law career. They can with one freshman phone first call. semester. That's how that works. <laughs> The power you know, of the you kill philosophy your law career. Because... Go to law school. Now. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you kill your law career. And then, as if that's not bad enough, his girlfriend dumps him because he did the debate too. Oh God! Yeah, you know that's that is amazing. Like they've been together since they're twelve, and I she's know. like, "You're talking in a class." Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> what? Yeah. Fucking, that is love. Like, you fucking nailed that shit, honey. It's a shame he never, he never got to premature ejaculate with her. Uh, yes. No shame. She's fucking at least over the jeans. Come on. <laughs> Come on. They've been together since they were 12. I was imagining at least that. It yeah. It was supposed to happen at the Newsboys concert anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that was the plan. What a ripoff, man. <laughs> if only we'd made it to Newsboys. <laughs> I've been pretending to like this band for years. <laughs> so now it's back to the Muslim girl getting home, where we yes. learn that she secretly yes. listens to Franklin Graham <laughs> doing commentary on Corinth. You know, like Muslims like Muslim do. Women. They, do <laughs> they load up Franklin Graham's commentary on Corinthians on their iPod, lay in their bed, close their eyes like they're <laughs> masturbating to Sting. Well, yeah, she's, she's acting like she's turning on like Fog Hat Slow Ride after yeah. a high school <laughs> party and listening to Franklin Graham. I'll tell you though, this is Graham. every atheist 
this dream, though. I was getting a little hot and heavy. She's like laying there. She's got her little perky breasts there. She's listening to Bible quotes. You know she's going to flip her button in a few seconds. <laughs> you know it's going to happen. Well, I lubed up for nothing because it doesn't. <laughs> Hey, I wouldn't call it nothing. I well, mean, <laughs> it's just unfortunate she has the only iPod which which remains on the whole time, all the you time. Listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a fucking real bummer, as it turns out. It's the battery, battery waster lasts mode. Yeah, four minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even make it to Second Corinthians. <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, so right when I thought she was masturbating, I started, and, and unfortunately, that means I finished on the little boy sneaking, and that was awkward. <laughs> so her, like little, any good Muslim, yeah. <laughs> I love too that the little boy, the little boy sneaks in and evidently knows what First Corinthians would even mean. Like, how does he know that's not a band? I, right. <laughs> right. Like, if I like. If I, if I, when I was a little boy, if I snuck in and saw the name of some holy text, I would be like, mm, I don't, yeah. literally don't have any idea what that yeah. is. Like, Especially a holy tattle. text from a different religion, right? Like this, right. this kid's getting comparative religion classes he's at like, the age eight. Yeah. He's like, Franklin right. Graham, fucking Joel Osteen. Come on. Get, some, get a reasonable commentary, you bitch. <laughs> Shit. A moderate. Come on, at least. So <laughs> now we get. My favorite scene in the whole fucking movie. This is it's time for dinner with Superman and Cancer Girl. Oh, oh this is brutal. It's the greatest scene. That is the best scene in the entire no, movie. Of any movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's just it's just we, perfect. We seriously in this scene, I'm not gonna blow I'm gonna let you do all the explaining, but there was a scene where we had to stop because both Tom and I were crying. We were laughing so hard and had to rewind it. It is an amazing scene. So, okay, so again, this movie goes to insane lengths to make the bad guys bad. This is probably the greatest example of that. They sit down for dinner. She's, she's got cancer and then went home and really dolled up, um, to go to this restaurant with she him. still looks uh, let's not like stra- a scarecrow. <laughs> you can see her lymph for nodes her. through her face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's got hot The cancer is spread face. to your face skin. <laughs> <laughs> So he sits down and he's like, I've got news. And she's like, so do I. He's like, I just made partner. She says, I have cancer. And his next line. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> he says, this couldn't wait until tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and then he breaks up with her for metastasizing. No, 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 hold on, hold on now, hold on now. He breaks, he breaks up, we, we timed this. Their relationship ends in under a minute and 30 seconds. It's a minute and 30 seconds from I have cancer to I'm breaking up with you. No shit, I cannot believe that. That was amazing. It's so funny too. When he says that, he says that word and we, we were, we were shocked. We started laughing because we thought he, we didn't, we were like, there was like no way in your brain that you're like, he said that. There's no way. <laughs> so you're trying to think of something else he could have said there like instead. That. Yeah. <laughs> but you rewind it and you find out, no, he really did say, can this wait until tomorrow? And then he says, in, to justify it, he's like, you broke our deal. Yeah. <laughs> you broke our deal. She's just like, Fucking get the cancer! I have, get the, I have, this is not how you human. This is not how this works at all. Uh, and, uh, this leads to a fun game too. I thought cancer breakup lines. <laughs> so like, it's not you, it's your cancer. <laughs> like, listen, I love spending time with your cancer, but uh, I think we should see other people with uh, the same amount of cancer. <laughs> uh, me with a zero cancer person, and you with a cancer super cancer person. <laughs> Wow. And then, of course, we haven't chuckled in long enough, so it's time to go back to David A.R. White and the African guy, Salt and Pepper, getting their rental car. And wouldn't you know it, the rental car won't start either. It's like. hold, Hold on. The rental car is delivered by a man who clearly looks like a serial killer. Oh, yeah. He could not have found an uglier, more yeah. misshapen he's human a, being. He's the kind of guy who just sawed someone's face off and is wearing it. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. The rental car is full of parts. <laughs> like, and not automotive no, parts. No, no, no. Not automotive parts. Yeah. This guy is fucking misshapen in a fucking Quasimodo way. <laughs> If he showed up with a car, he'd be like, you can have the car. I'll take an Uber, man. I got some fucking <laughs> options. You are terrifying. But, of course, the African guy doesn't mind waiting as long as David A.R. White promises to do the God is good all the time thing with him again. <sighs> yeah, that's their thing. Like, that's their, that's their, like, buddy line. Like, yeah. God is always good and always God is super bestie good or whatever. They fucking <laughs> go back and forth. It's like, they're like, they're even they're. 
even their fucking fellatio of God is circular logic. Oh, yeah, like, right. That's it. <laughs> right. And and then we cut to Dementia Lady's horse daughter calling Superman. <laughs> Dementia Lady's horse daughter. <laughs> she, she's Dean Kane's sister. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is where we learned that. And she's trying to convince evil Superman Dean Kane that just broke up with his cancer <laughs> girlfriend to come visit his dying mom, but he won't <laughs> because work. atheists only visit their dying moms if they meet minimum arithmetic well, skills. They, they have to be able to do math. But at least head, he right? says it walking around like a douchebag in a fucking clearly like on some kind of board meeting yeah, or something. Yeah, no kidding, right? He's like standing like right behind people like, yeah, with the like, phone in his ears like, I don't give a fuck about my mom. You know what I give a fuck about? Mom. <laughs> right, in, a, in, in the middle of a meeting, apparently. Make her take a derivative or I'm not coming. <laughs> <laughs> So and apparently this character, Dementia Daughter, is is we learn uh, right after this is Kevin Sorbo's girlfriend or wife or granddaughter. No, hold on. I, I I think I would I would add it's his stupid bitch girlfriend who left the fucking wine in the car. <laughs> 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 Oh my god! It's so atheist of you to point that out and make her feel bad. <laughs> yeah. No, but seriously, like he walks into this room, and then he essentially is is thanking her for getting this dinner party ready with his, the fucking Brotherhood of Evil Mutants or whatever that's coming <laughs> over later. And they're essentially like, like, but then she forgets the wine in the car, and, he's, and you could tell he's quietly suppressing the rage. <laughs> he looks he's so mad. Like, he's like, he like takes a deep breath, and he's like, I know you're really fucking stupid. I'm sorry I'm dating you. Yeah. They have the most bizarre exchange at that point. They yeah. have an exchange where he basically praises her for being bright. Right. He says, I wasn't going to fuck you unless you got an A in my class. Right. And she's so confusing. angry. And she's mad. Yeah, she's like, fuck yeah, you. You're she's offended you by are. that. Really? As if to say, like, I'm more than just the content of my character. Yeah, right. I'm also a fuckable pussy. Yeah, well, <laughs> women hate it when you appreciate them for their intellects, clearly. <laughs> my bottom half is human. It's Don't so forget. Weird. It's so weird. <laughs> I look like Tony Robbins with lipstick, but my bottom half is legit. <laughs> I have a vagina. Human vagina. <laughs> yeah. Well, doesn't he say, he says something too. He says something like, um, uh, you know, there's, there's only room in this relationship for two people and not for your 2000 year old angry, jealous God or whatever. Like, it's, it's like, he's not joining you in the bedroom. Like, I'm not asking. It's not like, it's like, all right, I'm uh, almost finished. Come on, Jesus, polish me off. <laughs> yes. I was going to say, if he was there, he'd just film it. I mean, he's not gonna, he would be very helpful. I just feel, so, it feels weird. He rubs my back during, you know, just like, come on, man. Keeps That's telling me after. I can do it. I, I don't, I like, like I was I wasn't doubting that, but uh, it seems to mean well. So now we get to <laughs> to Sorbo's well. dinner party where we get every goddamn cliche except for the fucking monocle. No shit. No ivory shit. tower elite or Enormous whatever. Enormous leather chairs, snifters of Christian blood. <laughs> <laughing about laughs> students and Christians, as stupid they are, yeah. Well, and again, these are philosophy professors, all of them. In real life, they're eating mushrooms and fucking each other right now. <laughs> that is what, absolutely what happens, yes. I've been to that party yes. many times. <laughs> Either that or they're Uber drivers at night. Just I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Um, also, we cut away from this uh, to to get this scene where uh, Martin, the Chinese kid, is talking to his dad on the phone, and this this is ridiculous. I, I didn't recognize this because I don't speak Chinese, but he's speaking Cantonese. Yes, yes. And the dad is speaking back in Mandarin. Though, right. I mean, they're from the same country, but they're they're completely different language. It might as well be like Esperanto on one side and sign language on the other <laughs> side. Of the like you can't do that. Well, maybe the call was routed through Hong Kong first. <laughs> And then it had to zip <laughs> oh, it over gets to translated <laughs> yeah. with those crazy Chinese phones. Yeah, but like I said, I just I, that that I, I read that little nugget on IMDb or whatever, and I had to bring it up for that. So then we go back to the dinner party where everyone's discovering now that she messed up the wine and left Jesus it in the car. Christ, because you dumb sh- bitch! The fuck yes. is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's horse top. It's really hard to pick up wine <laughs> in the car with the hooves. Well, you and can't, I- and then you try to use your feet and jump it. It's really tough. <laughs> She can't really open the bottle of wine, but she could certainly stomp on the ground how many you have. (laughs) (laughs) It's amazing, too, because they're at this dinner party, and the way you discover that the wine has been 
left in the car and is no longer good <laughs> is like, all of the, like <laughs> fucking everybody at the dinner party behaves like a petulant child. They taste they take a bite of, this tastes like a foot. Like they're just they're like, just like <laughs> if somebody's in my house and I served them anything, I don't care what I serve them, they're like this is fucking vile and disgusting in your home. <laughs> I'd be like, fucking, here's a baseball bat in your head or you're leaving. Those are your choices. Fuck. What did the back actually says? Talk about grapes of wrath. Oh, God. Zing. Everybody goes, oh, God. God. So what a smart shizzle. people know oh. grapes of wrath. More like original Sinfandel. <laughs> Booyah. I'm like, I'm, this is just unrealistic. Condescending atheist wine puns are usually much better than that. <laughs> I found that offensive. <laughs> and then what's the what's the line right before? Because like the 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 last thing he says to her, I'm trying to remember what it is. The last thing he says to her is so mean. Like she's a work in progress or something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, know thyself. You're yeah. You know your limitations. Yeah, right. God, it's the right. meanest fucking thing. <laughs> you're a really bad house theist. I know you've been serving us these <laughs> trays of peppers the whole time, but it's not working out. <laughs> So yeah, so she but but she has enough of this shit and wanders off. <laughs> and then we get part two of Skippy's presentation where he gets to revisit the Stephen Hawking quote and and refute it by okay. invoking Professor John Lennox. Oh, okay. I I was very confused by this part. Do I have this correct? Um he was saying Stephen Hawking is wrong because you can't prove that spam is the best food <laughs> yes. and john lennox agrees that spam isn't the best food that it, that's is that it. what happened I, no I, yeah. I, you are a little off i think it's you can't prove spam created the universe i think that's how it goes <laughs> so yeah so and then of course he he really throws one out here where uh like skippy shows a slide where he's like but stephen hawking also said that <laughs> philosophy <laughs> is dead so so yeah. if i go ahead and quote mine enough <laughs> I'll I'm pretty sure to... Hawking had like other words on either side nope. of that sentence. Nope. There might have he was... just said that and that was it. That I was... thought there was some context <laughs> that philosophy maybe if it ignores science would also, be stupid and dead. Can we know. talk about Hawking's quote here just for a second just because it's like I don't even get it. Like I don't even get what he's trying to say. Like Hawking is essentially saying and maybe I'll call myself out as an idiot here, but I listen I, I read this quote a couple times and it's essentially saying because gravity exists the universe created itself. Yeah, I, I mean, again, there's a, a book on either side of that. Right. Yeah, you're right, exactly. Right. Right. Which is why that quote, I'm right there with you, Cecil. That quote, standalone, doesn't do anything for me. No, I have no. to assume that there's context within that or around that that I'm, I'm not privy to, and all I have to work with is that quote. That quote is that quote didn't do shit for me either. Yeah. I was like, oh, all right, I fucking just ignored it. I was like, I'm. <laughs> Because I just recognize yeah. that it's an out of context sure, quote. I'm just like, sure. fucking pass that off. I'm not yeah. going to listen to it. Yeah, yeah. And, well, and then, but but basically, what Stephen Hawking is saying in that quote, if you take the whole fucking argument that he's making, is that there are self organizing principles within the universe that can explain all the organization. You know, that's all he was saying is that when you start with things like gravity and the weak force and the strong, you end up with what we have now. Sure. Right. right. And philosophy and physics actually converge, and the philosophers that don't acknowledge that are kind of stupid. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. That was his whole point. So, but of course, you know, so Skippy is, it, it moves on from that to, uh, to evolution. And again, this is like the argument from, I started talking about one thing and switched. Um, cause he says <laughs> I like, love that argument. well, yeah, well, yeah it, it, it works very well for ex-wives as I understand it. Um, <laughs> but he, <laughs> It's a great way to make him an ex. <laughs> I might find out before this episode's over. <laughs> Eli taking notes. <laughs> Don't take notes, just take your money. <laughs> Bank notes. Those are the notes that matter. So but but basically he argues that evolution can't explain abiogenesis. Which, which it doesn't not, try to, which is kind of no. nice. Yeah, right. That's like it, it doesn't explain how to unlock Dungeon 7 in Zelda. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not what it's doing. Yeah. I, I, we, 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 they, they, they try to do that all the time where they like that's a different area of science that has to deal with yeah. the creation of fucking, you know, life. It does. That doesn't have anything to do it with nothing to do with yeah, evolution. It yeah. never has. Evolution doesn't even attempt to address it in a meaningful way. 
But right. it's still, it's part of the either or fallacy. Like, they're just like, yes. well, if it's not evolution and you don't have a better explanation, then it must have been Jesus's boogers or whatever well, the fucking <laughs> conversation but, starter is. And see, that's the most insane thing about this is that, like, scientists do have explanations and they're all better than it was Jesus's boogers. It's just <laughs> that scientists are willing to say, you know what, we don't have enough evidence to definitively answer this, so we're not going to carelessly answer it. And then Christians are like, we will. I know, right? So we uh, win. If anyone's here to carelessly answer, <laughs> let me raise my hand. Right. I've been carelessly answering for 2,000 years. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But zero of these scientists are saying that D Darwin started the universe. That's not. <laughs> That's nobody not. is saying that. <laughs> When he said, let there be evolution. Well, but of course, we can dismiss, I think we can dismiss Darwin and everything he has to say based on the Lee Strobel quote that the kid <laughs> throws out here during his ar argument from the Cambrian explosion. <laughs> what was that? Oh, yeah, that's right. He's like fucking like, yeah, so uh, so there's like lots of fucking different stuff that just pops right into existence and is the same thing always throughout history. Right. That's yeah. Yeah. Because life diverged quite a bit in a short period of time, relatively speaking. That must mean that that was the fifth day of. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, right, God. Yeah. That fucking thing. Yeah. That's where that little twat was going yeah. with that. Then why are there still black people? Wow. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> I don't know Lee Strobel. <laughs> and but, but the most amazing thing about this stupid fucking argument he's making is that if even if he was nailing it and he's not, uh, it would be the God of the Gaps argument. Right. Right? Like like right. he's trying for that and failing. It's like if I don't know and you don't know then I know and I'm right. Quid pro whatever. <laughs> PhD please. Where's that PhD guys? I win. <laughs> So I guess while you wrestle with your commitment to atheism in the wake of that marvelous nugget of brain thinking, we'll pause for a quick break. But before we do, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Professor Radisson succeed in his nefarious plan to skull rape Jesus? <laughs> Will we be treated with more down-home duck wisdom? Will Tom yep. and Cecil ever speak to me again after this shit? <laughs> Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the amateurish conclusion of God's Not Dead. And now it's time for another edition of Philosophy Discussions as Envisioned by an Uneducated Christian Hick. Boy, that Aristotle sure was smart, huh? Yep, yep, real smart. So smart. Yep. I hate Jesus. Professor Radisson, come on in. Have a, uh, have a seat. Thanks. Um, there's no such thing as God, Dean. I, uh, I see. Now, I have to talk to you about a, a serious matter, Professor. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens when you die. R right. Now, I I've gotten a number of complaints from the ACLU, the, the number being actually uh, one for every student in your philosophy 151 class again. Huh. Uh, there is no God? R well, religious coercion mostly, but uh, uh, there's also a kid who says you roughed him up in the hallway. Well, Josh Wheaton is a filthy fucking liar. That's what that's about. Okay, see, now, I didn't tell you which student lodged that. The Bible uh, is a fairy tale. Uh, well, yes, it, it, it is, but, but that's not really germane to this discussion, is it? Hogwash, horse feathers, hullabaloo, that's what God is. Okay. Is relevant. Oh, oh, okay, yeah, but that's profoundly off subject. Yeah, I, I, I and, and you know what? I feel like it gets to the heart of the problem we're having here. Only wimpy little pussies love Jesus. Okay, yeah, see, I feel like I get a lot fewer complaints if you are able to make it through a conversation without sounding like P.Z. Myers coming down off of ecstasy. God's the worst at Canasta. The worst. That, that is a, a very odd complaint. I hate Jesus. <laughs> and now it's time for yet another edition of Philosophy Discussions as Envisioned by an Uneducated Christian Hick. Christianity is stupid. Communism is good. We hate Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. When we last saw our hero, he was thwarting all the experts with his scrappy defense of Jesus magic. <laughs> <laughs> but before we can get to the aftermath of his intellectual throwdown, we have to remind you that the redhead chick still has cancer of the life and <laughs> is going to die. Uh, also, she wah, might have just been wah. raped by a doctor, is how they set the scene up. <laughs> yeah, I don't know no, why that you would ever do that. That is the creepiest scene. 
He walks in that room and just shuts the door, and it's like, don't ask me about my business. <laughs> it's like, it's like the end of Godfather, oh. for Christ's right. sakes. <laughs> you have no idea what's happening yeah. behind the door, but it's nothing no, good. Yeah, it's right. like Bogs from Shawshank closing that door. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Yeah, she and the, and the guy's like, uh, "Are you sure you don't have anybody you'd want with you for this? Like maybe just somebody to film it, like make a, maybe a midget, <laughs> <laughs> a puzzle, thunderstorm, nothing." But then we go back. So listen, I'm going to go ahead and make this tape. Uh, the producers are going to need it for later. <laughs> so <laughs> my recommendation means a lot in this industry. <laughs> yeah. Do you like leather couches? I'm just curious. <laughs> So, and then we cut from her back to Sorbo's class where we were just like the, the, the kids are filing out from his second argument or whatever. And once they do, Sorbo gives him the sarcastic slow clap of evil or whatever. He plays oh, yeah. this character exactly like a Buck Rogers villain in this movie. It's amazing. <laughs> God, that guy is, this guy hams his way through this acting. It's like nobody told him he's not, wasn't still on the Hercules show. I guess. I think he fully expects somebody to throw him a club or a sword and fight a fucking two headed dog at any moment. <laughs> like if, if the screen shifted, he'd be like, yeah, all right. I'm game for that too. I, I, I don't know what any of this means. I just say the words in the order they write them in. <laughs> See, but I think that's how they tricked him into being in this movie, right? Is they told him it was an episode of Hercules returns, but he was playing the evil version. That's why he has to go T. You know, like the bizarro Hercules. <laughs> Make perfect sense then. That's awesome. Um, and, and then, of course, this is where we also have to learn why Sorbo truly is an atheist, and it's because oh, yeah. Jesus oh. killed his mom. But at that, but now this is where Tom said, and yep. I agree, he's not technically an atheist. I think he still believes in God. Doesn't he say he like hates him here? Yeah, yeah. right, the, right. Th this is the part where they. This is the part where they so misunderstand the atheist position. That they think it comes from a place of acknowledgement and dislike or hatred <laughs> rather than, yeah, it's just not real. Well, right. I'm never going to say, I hate God and get a fucking boo hoo hoo -y about it because I don't think there's a God. I don't hate God. I don't hate Dumbo either. Like, it's not real. <laughs> It's not real, guys. I fucking hate Dumbo. <laughs> Fuck that guy. <laughs> and then, of course, he throws out his Shakespeare quote shit talk for Jesus or whatever. Oh, that is so maddening when he's just like, that's all sound and fury signifying nothing. And he gets so fucking you mad, bro, about it. And you're like, what is going on? You are so easy to bait. You're the easiest dude that's ever been baited. Holy shit. This Goddamn guy right I ordered the code red on God. Goddamn right I did. <laughs> Oh, wait. It's like he's just like, he's like mad that somebody's been catfishing him online for six weeks. <laughs> just like, oh my God. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. As easy to bait as those people Eli fucks with on Twitter. <laughs> uh, and then we've got to go to back to another not all uh, you do moment. So this is where we get the Muslim girl getting the fuck beat out of her for Jesus sake. Oh my God. And the brother who ratted on her is standing there crying. Like, I didn't think this was going to happen. You didn't think you had a volatile incendiary father like that. <laughs> you missed that part growing up. Like nobody goes from snuggles and hugs to I'll drag you by your hair and throw you out of the house. And then cry conflicted about it. Right. And then collapse <laughs> in a fucking puddle of man on the stairs. Yeah, right. And again, this is so bizarre from the religion that does this shit all the time. Like, if this girl had been a lesbian and the father had been a Christian, the Christians watching this movie would have been like, well, that's tough love. <laughs> right, right. It's like Donald Trump bragging about how he's like more qualified than Sarah Palin. <laughs> right. Which he is not. Which no, he is actually, not. Which is even more it. terrifying. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, no <laughs> shit. He's equally qualified uh with Phil Robertson. So of course and then we get uh we get another shot of of um Martin and his dad speaking mutually unintelligible languages to each other again. Um, and w according to the subtitles, which they must be reading, uh, Martin's really coming around to this god shit. And the dad is basically like, you know, they don't really smile on that back home, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. It's like, you know how our Chinese government persecutes Christians, right? And the dad's like, yeah, so, well... No, I just wanted to mention that. <laughs> okay, bye. Cool. You it's an important, or important against. scene in my character's arc. <laughs> right. Just want to throw that out there. And of course, again, because we've got ninety people to keep track of, we have to then cut to Cancer Lady doing with her little Oscar clip, where she's trying to write her blog about oh, Duck God. Commander. <laughs> I love that she's sitting by herself, writing to herself, for herself, 
out loud. Out loud. <laughs> out loud. At the same because we all think and write at the same tempo. <laughs> I am right to backspace to ding this down. Well, at this point, her brain is just riddled with atheism. It's just oh, it's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's like mad cow disease. <laughs> That's what was wrong with her face. <laughs> pre-Zika. It's pre-Zika. <laughs> so, so then we have to get uh, 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 the centaur lady coming in to break up with Kevin Sorbo. And she breaks up with him, and he's like, um... Veto. <laughs> I know that's the best. He's just like, no, I don't accept that. That's, that's not going to happen. I will not allow you <laughs> no, to do this. This is not. I own my women. My women <laughs> own your chattel for me. And again, see, my treasure. No, oh, you again. Are they telling us that atheists are the one that treat women like property? Right. The, the guys who venerate a book that has a rape price. <laughs> 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 Fucking terrible. Unbelievable. So now we get the probably most useless scene because this they, they have not only do they have nothing to say on this scene, but it really just brings up all kind of shit that's wrong with them. And they, they have no uh, uh, discourse or uh, no recourse for it, rather. So this is where the Muslim girl goes to Pastor Dave to tell him that she's been kicked out of her house. Do they give her a place to stay? Eh. No, they Did give her travel it? tissues. That's the, only right? thing, that's the only thing they give her. Like the fucking yeah. the fat ladies, the like the tiny little desk, box of tissues. Brings you her like, ever yeah, <laughs> brings her like a tiny little thing of fucking like, airline travel here, tissues. Here, have these tiny little tissues, and you can cry into this thimble. Right? Yes. <laughs> when, you, when you fill it with tears, just drink it, and that tastes like Jesus. It's okay. There's a, we'll there's a violin at the very it. bottom of this tiny bag yeah. of fucking. Yeah, can't even give her a full box of Kleenex for fuck's sake. Well, she's kind of being a bitch about it. I mean, because. <laughs> Like, I mean, God wanted her to get beat up by yeah, her This is dad. a woman who got like, kicked out of her house. She didn't even grab her purse. She didn't have a fucking wallet. She's got nothing. She's hanging out. A pa- and and before that, even Pastor Dave and fucking Jambalaya or whatever that fucking black man's <laughs> name is. <laughs> it was Morgan Freeman, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't know his name. Dude, does lie. he even have yeah, a name? No, I don't no. think so. Like, it's like, it's, I it's don't like, know. God is happy. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Nigerian smile pants or whatever. It's like, <laughs> they're standing in the doorway, like three feet away from her, talking directly about, about her. her. Yeah. <laughs> because people love it when you do that. <laughs> So yeah, and and like basically, here's here's Pastor Dave's words of wisdom to this chick. Basically, like, quit your oh. bitching. God, he have some what? tissues. That's super reassuring, Pastor Dave. Right? Also, where am I sleeping? I know, right? <laughs> he goes, "You're not alone, Aisha." And she's like, "Oh, will you stay with me?" And she's like, "No, no, I meant Jesus. I meant yeah. imaginary yeah. people are no, with when I you." Say, when I say you're not alone, I mean it like figuratively. I bet in the literal sense, <laughs> not, you're actually alone. You are you're very, definitely very alone. alone in the physical in, sense. In fact, you're going to need to leave. The church closes at five. <laughs> <laughs> And now we get what we assume is the cut scene of Sorbo raping Skippy in the elevator. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so like, it, but instead of the rape that this scene is clearly promising, Skippy gets in the elevator and like Sorbo stands right behind him, like thrusting his fucking pelvis into his <laughs> rectum or whatever. And he goes like, uh, oh, well, you know, you're doing well on the debate, but now I'm going to change things up a bit. Will he ever explain what that means? No. No, no he doesn't. Just... And nothing. What change? I actually was waiting. Like, what are they going to like? Are they going to have a gladiatorial like Q-tip <laughs> fight or something? <laughs> like, what's going to happen? Like, then nothing happened that was different except for that he challenged him more aggressively. Well, I think that what we were supposed to get is that that Sorbo was going to be directly debating him this time. But since he interjected approximately the same as he did when he was in the audience, I think it was just like, I'm going to be standing at the podium and you'll have a smaller podium. That's what's what'll be different. <laughs> and I'll have a giant cigar and you'll you have a little have cigarette full use with of a the folder. computer. <laughs> <laughs> Next time on Podium Wars. <laughs> so, and OK, so and, and I think this is, again, super telling of where the Christians think that they are. They never, ever, ever make a positive case for God's existence, right? The argument that they're making throughout this movie isn't that God exists. It's that it's not ridiculously stupid to believe that God exists. They fail to make that argument. Yep. Yep. And isn't that what he says? That's one of the major, major points of his argument is it's not intellectual suicide to be a creationist, he says at some point. Yeah, exactly. 
and and now this is going to be like this is the third like third round of the big debate series or whatever and in this one they're going to discuss the problem of evil now this whole movie has had an undercurrent of problem of evil right like the girl gets cancer why would god do that why would god give dementia to the lady that loves jesus and stuff like that so there's been sort of this half-ass effort to attack or to tackle the problem of evil throughout the movie. And when they actually have the opportunity for the guy to actually just talk about it directly, they still have absolutely nothing. Well, it, it turns out there is no problem of evil. It's fine because God's going to get rid of evil when he goes to camp next summer. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know her, but yeah. Yeah, they're counter to the problem of evil, which is like the big problem, right? And they, and they even, and the best part is, I actually think they elucidate the problem quite clearly. Because like at one point he says, like, you know, the, 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 he, he identifies the problem of evil and he says, you know, if God is an, you know, all powerful, all loving God, you know, what about suffering and yada, yada, yada? And it's like, all right, you elucidated the problem well. And so I was, I was actually kind of excited. I'm like, oh, he's going to, like, there's going to be a good, here we go. It's going to get spirited. Yeah. And he's just like, <laughs> well, free will. Well yeah, that's all he's got. And, and I'm like, I'm writing in my nose. So, oh, that explains why deer slowly die of third degree burns suffered in forest fires. Free will. That explains why babies get cancer. Free will. That right. explains starving children. Free will. That explains AIDS. And, and, and as I'm writing that in my notes, Kevin Sorbo's character says that. He does. He's, he mentions tsunamis. He mentions right. non-human cause suffering. Right. And I was like, what the fucking, what is my free will when the fucking enormous wave crashes down around me? I have fucking all the free will to try to swim real hard? Well, I think that's because of gay marriage, as I oh, understand yeah. it. Yeah, I guess but, you're right but, there. But that's it. But then, like, Sorbo's like, oh, well, that doesn't explain natural disasters. That doesn't explain things like the Holocaust. Obviously, we don't need that level of suffering in order to keep free will going or whatever. You could have just killed Hitler with some lightning bolts or whatever. And I'm like, oh, yeah, what do you got for that? Uh, and he changes the subject. He goes, okay, now let's talk about absolute morality. It's like, you're not even going to answer. Why did you bring it up then? It's Why your you movie. In your own movie. Yeah. In your own movie where you control the conversation. You control <laughs> both sides of the conversation. And, and you, you still st painted yourself into an intellectual corner. <laughs> That's amazing. It's like nobody proofread the script. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right, uh, Doctor Rice Brooks, their apologetics researcher, did a shit job. I'm just no, saying. I, I think I think they like they like the apologetics researcher was like, okay, on the left side is the list of problems, and on the right side is our answers to it. And the fucking left side was clearly longer, but they just included all of it. <laughs> just included all of it. Like I don't know, just keep writing it down. Eventually, we'll make a point accidentally, maybe. Well, and then, of course, then then his argument becomes about whether or not there are moral absolutes. And I wrote, ooh, our only weakness, you know, and, and basically <laughs> like <laughs> so Skippy says, like, you know, basically, if there's no God, why shouldn't I rape your head? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, what he says at one point is like, well, why shouldn't I cheat on the fucking on this test or whatever? And I'm thinking, well, because every syllabus that's ever written is a full page on why you shouldn't fucking cheat and how you'll get fucking <laughs> Bounce yes. if you do. That's why. Well, you, again, okay, so there's so much wrong with this. First of all, you don't need moral absolutes in order for cheating to be wrong in this particular situation. That right. is subjective. You know, right. like, duh. Right. But the other thing is, is that you don't need God to believe in moral absolutes, right? I mean, that's, that's, that's insane. Like, like the, the one does not preclude the other. So we're like second generation either or fallacy at this point. Yeah, but that's the best that, like, that's literally the best that these guys have. And you realize that and you're like, well, why am I only an hour into this movie? <laughs> <laughs> there was a point where we watching this movie. And Sarah's it's like, we have a half an hour left. And I looked at her and I said, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! <laughs> that is my best friend's wife, but I'm staring right at her saying, fuck you! <laughs> and Okay, so like, he goes, you know, well, but atheists don't have a moral code, but Christians do. And I'm like, can we talk about that moral code? Yeah, no kidding, right? Yeah, it's a good one. <laughs> How's that working yeah, out for you guys? Jesus yeah. Christ. Now, oh, guys, did we, did, we, did we put that part in the Bible about slavery? Oh, we forgot it. What about yeah. beating children? No, we skipped no. that part. We what actually about, recommend uh, that. of women? No, we're going to mm. ignore that. But uh, anyway, keep the Sabbath holy, guys. <laughs> yeah, the, uh, any idols. yeah, write that one down. <laughs> right. Write that one down. All right. Mixing fabrics. We don't have we – have, we can put in rape or the fabric mixing, guys. Which one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> fabric mixing it is. Fabric mixing in red. Good. Okay, yeah, guys. Slavery or agricultural <laughs> rules. Which one do you want to go with? <laughs>
<laughs> Should women be allowed indoors when they're menstruating? I don't know. Let's write this down. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get the what about owning humans? <laughs> Fucking ignore that. I, you know, don't ignore it. Let's just make rules so that we know how to do it. Well, yeah, exactly. Make sure we do it properly here so it's not cruel. Otherwise, we're going to be beating up for like 72 hours. <laughs> it really, I mean, let's be reasonable. 48 should be a line in the sand on this, I think. Good. Got it. So, and then, he, of course, he gives the argument from I don't feel special without God. Uh, which is oh, really yeah, the, yeah, the yeah. primary argument this movie has, right? Like we get, we're going to get it a little bit with the newsboys here in a minute, but that's oh. the main argument of this movie: is I don't feel special without God. But that's the main argument of Christianity. Well, right. Yeah. Like, so it's it's a good thing that that's their fallback because that's their fall forward too. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's the whole thing. It's like it totes makes me feel better. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All that, right. Actually, that song is better than any newsboy <laughs> song I've ever heard. <laughs> you should be a newsboy. Yeah. <laughs> they all do look like divorced dads, so. Um, <laughs> they don't look that lonely. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe the drummer. But, uh, yeah, so, and, and he I love. The <laughs> he really was. <laughs> So also, I I love this like the 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 big cultivating argument right from from Skippy. He's like, you know, I just want everyone in this class to be able to make up their own minds because I'm a Christian and we're all about letting everyone make up their own minds. Yeah, religion is all about being pro-choice. Wait, hold on. Uh, right, yeah. hold on. It's so, it, Damn it. Uh, you guys, I'm cut, not like cut. your mean professor who's just saying, you know, you have to do it or you'll get a bad grade. <laughs> what I'm saying is you have to do it or you will spend all of eternity, <laughs> eternity. eternity in terrible, <laughs> tormented suffering. So, I mean, what? choose which one of us is the nice guy. <laughs> And, and also, of course, then this is the, then we get the like, you know, who ordered the code red moment here, um, where he's going like, but who are you looking forward to failing, professor? Me or Jesus? <laughs> and of course. <laughs> and then, and then it, it breaks down and it, it, it actually steals from two different, uh, Robin Williams movies. I know, <laughs> there's a, there's a dead poet society, oh, yep. captain, yep. my captain <laughs> moment. And there's also a goodwill hunting, it's not your fault. Yes, moment. yes! <laughs> <laughs> It's like somebody was like, hey, that shit was powerful. Let's, yeah. let's just use it's that. It's so ridiculous because everybody's like, go ahead and stand up if you believe in Jesus. And like a bunch of people stand up. And I read somewhere that like one kid doesn't stand up because yes. he's stuck in his desk. Because <laughs> he's too bad to get up. <laughs> you know you're filming the in Louisiana. Kid's yeah. like, fat the fat kid's like, fat I believe. I believe. I just <laughs> might don't have a girlfriend to keep the cake off my tray. <laughs> I get so much cafeteria cake. <laughs> He's actually during the class fucking a piece of cake under his desk. He's actually the ghost of Skippy Future. He doesn't have a girlfriend anymore. <laughs> to, to take the cake away. Oh, well, awesome. Gotta take that away. Keep you scrawny <laughs> under fat so she can keep fighting him. And I love to, okay. Sorbo, when he's bested in this argument, his response is to just walk out on his own classroom in humiliation. Yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> Are you fucking yeah. kidding me? And he got tricked by like, when did you stop physically abusing God? That guy, <laughs> right. That's how he got tricked. <laughs> really? Wait, no, I didn't. Oh, fuck. Damn. Ah. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, philosophy professors are pretty easy to trick with shit like that. And, of course, okay, so, and then this is a, a, an amazing scene as well. It's a competitor for best scene in the movie because yeah. now we get pa Salt and Pepper going back out to the car <laughs> to go to Disney World, but now they've decided that they're going to pray for the car to start. Now, I want you to keep in mind that so far in this movie, we have seen Pastor Dave interact with a young girl that just got beaten and thrown out of her home and has nowhere to go. We've seen him interact with a young woman whose mother has dementia and just broke up with her boyfriend and is questioning her worth. And they're going to pray to get to Disney World. <laughs> you want to work on that cancer lady, the ex-Muslim okay. abuse victim? No. No, no, no. we want this Volvo to start. That's the important <laughs> thing. Which is shenanigans. Volvo start every time. That's ridiculous. Hells yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, so, and then, of course, wouldn't you know it, after they pray, the car starts right away, and pa uh, David A.R. White's character goes, unbelievable, the black guy goes, no, 
it is faith. And I'm like, nope, unbelievable. <laughs> Subjected to double blind placebo testing, have a bunch of Christians pray for a fucking car. That's, un- <laughs> that's the definition of unbelievable. <laughs> But of course, now we've got to go back to to evil Superman and dementia mom. Oh Jesus! This is the fucking meanest scene ever. What a knob yeah. this guy is! <laughs> is Jesus real? Christ! That woman pushed you out of her vagina, you fucking goddamn! Fuck. <laughs> what the fuck, man? Well, apparently she got a graphing calculator now. She could do integration. <laughs> oh, okay. So <laughs> she's so worth mean. visiting once more. And so yeah, so basically he's sitting there with his Alzheimer's mom, going like. What the fuck's up with you and your stupid God? <laughs> and then she has this amazing moment of clarity and yet doesn't look at him. She goes on no, and she well, has this right. fucking like 45 minute soliloquy that she goes through directed at the guy who just asked the question and does it all staring straight forward. Yeah, but then you can't get the you can't get the focus with the prime lens if you don't do it that uh, way. That's true. <laughs> oh, I, we have to return it in an hour. We're going to use kidding, it. Right? <laughs> we have to bring it back to the student cage. <laughs> but isn't it amazing how much religion has conditioned us to where like this mo- woman is what we're supposed to believe is she's having this divine moment of lucidity where all of a sudden she's explaining things in a very clear manner and she is talking about an evil magical satyr who's trying to steal Dean Cain's soul. That's right. Her that's her moment of lucidity. <laughs> yep. She's like, the devil's after you. He's going to slam that door when you die. That's lucidity to these people. Right. Yep. Yeah. Because the, the answer, the answer to why does he get a good life is because sometimes the devil gives people a really good life. And <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> uh, I thought we were going to cut before I got to the end of that. It's just like, um, so I thought we were going to cut it. And so devil they sometimes. have a good life. Then. Yeah. I'm just yeah, like, okay, yeah. sign me up, devil. <laughs> like, where are you yes. at, bro? <laughs> I'll take one of the very good lives you have. <laughs> it's better than the staring straight forward shitting myself life. <laughs> And of course, okay, so then we go back to, to Pastor Dave and the African guy. Uh, do, what did you call him? Chumbawamba? <laughs> anyway, Jambalaya. Jambalaya, Jambalaya that, that was, was his it. name, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> they are, at, they appear to be driving from Louisiana <laughs> to Orlando, Florida uh-huh. via the Staples Center in Los Angeles, California. So, and, and then, okay, so now we've got to get everybody together at the Newsboys concert. Um, and first we see that Cancer Girl is there because apparently she's going to surprise the newsboys with one of these, oh, God. you know, Some more of a hard-hitting out. anger journalism. <laughs> yes. She just spews forth fucking random vitriol at strangers <laughs> and thrusts her iPhone in their general direction. Yeah, so at this point she demands that they explain why God gave her cancer, basically. Oh, God, yeah. I got to interrupt because every time, every time that that she interacts with one of these super Christians, whether it's the Phil Robertson stand in, you know, chubby chubs Robertson or whatever his name <laughs> is. And like the news people and like, I mean, I don't want to generalize. I don't know their genders. You know, it's the news, the news peoples. They're all like, they're all, they're all like kind and accommodating and loving. They're just like, yeah, oh, that's uh-huh. a great question. Let me, let me, let me take the time out of my day to calmly and lucidly answer your anger <laughs> question. Yeah, answer, and answer your really, really dumb question too. Cause some shit she, she, she's just like, don't you just believe in like a big stupid book? Like, <laughs> and they're just like, welcome. Welcome. We will yeah, calmly right. love you with our loving calmness and calmly love with calm <laughs> lovingness. And it's just like, nobody would do that. If you fucking ambush somebody with anger, people are like, I'm also angry now. That's how yeah, people but, work. But no, but Christians are better than us yeah. because we're atheists. So, and, and of course, like, she's demanding that they explain God, which is insane. I mean, but, but their explanation is even more insane because they're like, well, that's where we get our hope is from God. And they're like, well, that doesn't, that's not how you verify that things are <laughs> so well and then they ask her like where do you get your hope from and she's like i have cancer <laughs> how dare you i have cancer right in my hope organ <laughs> it's the worst cancer place for cancer the hope. it spreads to the lymph nodes very quickly <laughs> god and of course this is where the drummer starts channeling god and he's like i think what you really want to know is why how you can love jesus too and she's like you're right that's exactly what i want to know <laughs> and then she blows him, but we don't see that. So. <laughs> yeah. And at this point, I would have settled for that, honestly. 
that settled lumpy for faced it. chick. Settled for it. I'd have dropped my pants in fucking glory. I would have been so happy. <laughs> I'd be like, finally, something I can masturbate to in this movie. I didn't even care that one of them's deformed. Jesus. <laughs> I Rub jerked off three times in Saving Private Ryan. I couldn't even get a <laughs> once in this movie. Twice in Schindler's List. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want uh, Qui-Gon is pretty sexy, though. You know, <laughs> it's pretty easy. So, and then, of course, through crowd shots, we also learned that Skippy, Martin, Sorbo's X, and Hijab Girl are also all at this concert. Yeah, Why? Because... She- she can't afford to be anywhere <laughs> except for yeah, the right. Loose Boys concert. <laughs> well, let's see. What should I spend my limited read here zero resources on <laughs> newsboys tickets well right and how are we supposed to believe that did did pastor dave have a ticket to give to her because she was thrown out of her house without anything but the yeah. clothes she was wearing exactly he didn't even give her her hijab <laughs> i guess they all got <laughs> you won't need this <laughs> in hell <laughs> And uh, somehow they all have tickets in the uh, main character section of the audience. <laughs> which is cool. so that was com- that was convenient. Uh, <laughs> so now we get th- this amazing again beat off worthy scene where we get Kevin Sorbo sifting through his God is dead papers as though he normally masturbates to those, but today he just can't can't <laughs> he can't bring himself. Also, it's either that or he's filing them away so he can sell their souls on eBay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, he's definitely definitely about to have a weepy jerk with his God is Dead contract. <laughs> I prefer a high school yearbook, but, you know, to each his own, whatever. And, and then he switches over to a dying letter from mom, which I think is even better. That was a good call. <laughs> if you're going to weepy jerk it, yeah. Dying letter from mom, good stuff. The letter Sorbo was wins. written on Civil War paper, by the way. Like, uh, yes, you hold yes. that thing up. <laughs> And it's like, that's just like a fucking, like, uh, my dearest son. Like, it's like fucking Ken Burns would yeah, do right. a slow pan over that thing. The paper's all Telegram. parchment-y and, like, cracked at the edges and shit. Uh, Telegram for Kevin Sorbo, your mother is dead. She wants you to be a Christian. So, and then, of course, we got to go backstage with the uh, with the uh, newsboys who are now praying to God to first of all to get rid of this chick's cancer but more importantly to make her a Christian and show her Jesus' love yeah no you, it, it's a chemotherapy prayer I've heard of that oh yeah. I gotcha I gotcha it's a pradiation they do, oh. they do that yeah standard I don't know but again I saw those four dudes standing around waist level and she's the one bowed down I was like I have seen this movie I know how this ends. It ends four times. <laughs> and it ends four times with a champagne glass. <laughs> and then we get some of that great music that Christian bands are known for. Yeah. Oh, My music God. note here was the oncology song. <laughs> cool. When was the last time you guys went to a concert where they fucking put the words on PowerPoint on the fucking screen right? behind the fucking people singing them? Yeah. If you're good, people just know those words. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sing along. No, nobody gives a shit. All right, oh, I'll write it down um, for you. Hold we're on. not off book yet. Can we get a? Can we karaoke this somehow, you guys? Hold me closer, tiny <laughs> dancer. Okay, all right, all right. And of course, during this song, we're also getting Sorbo out to find Mina. Where it starts raining on him like uh, like Jim Carrey and Truman well, Show. Well, it's raining to his right, but it's yeah, pretty right. clear to his left. Just move over a few feet. You're fine. Whatever. They only had three buckets of water. They are just like, pour them down, pour them down. <laughs> Job's going to make it. Don't worry. Job's going to make it. <laughs> and then he crosses the street and he gets hit by a car. Like Charlie Brown missing the football. <laughs> oh, it's it's amazing. He goes up so high, and they show his face like. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! God. It was like he got lifted by a battle bot. Yeah, just right. like, like, his body might as well burst into flames and explode at this point. <laughs> Ridiculous! Shit. It's awesome. It was like, yeah, fucking <laughs> Optimus Prime didn't die that dramatically. <laughs> Fuck off. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now we get like the, the most like I, like at this point I didn't think this movie could still boggle my fucking mind. <laughs> but but the the pastors get out. The African guy who was unaware of the existence of car rentals 6 fucking days ago looks at the guy and says, "Yeah, his lungs are filling with blood. Man, He's kidding. definitely going to die." That's his medical prognosis. <laughs> We're just going to talk to him while his lungs are filling up. I know, I know. Let's, let's have That's a little fine. convo. What's going on, buddy? <laughs> I know this hurts a lot. Man, that must be excruciating. <laughs> anyway, who you got in the big game? <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, don't uh, worry, I'll uh, I won't spoil it. <laughs> <laughs> so and again, all right, what they're doing here now is saving his soul. There's uh, 300 people who have gathered around to watch this man die. No one makes any effort to apply any kind of first aid or help him in any way. <laughs> Instead, they leave him alone so this pastor can annoy him until his last <laughs> breath. Yep. And, like, everyone in the universe would agree that this is a dick move, right? <laughs> it's almost like he's pressing his chest, like, does this hurt? Does this hurt? Does this hurt? <laughs> That's awesome. So funny, too. And then the fucking guy, the, the pastor says something like, oh, well, it's, it's good that you're fucking like really, really, really extra double special hurt and not dead instantly. And I'm I like, yes. what? I know. It's like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you had died without terrible agony. Yeah. That would have sucked, right? You know, like in your sleep with a smile on your face. And your bed. Well, that would have been terrible. Yeah, this is excellent. You see how that pastor over there is smiling, the African guy? He's, <laughs> this is good. This is definitely good. All you got to do now is accept Jesus into your life. Do you? And he's like, I ex I just wanted him to be like, well, no, you have to say out the whole sentence. You just said accept. <laughs> and like, I accept Jesus as my... And then he dies. And, he <laughs> right. oh. and they're like, I lost another one. No! <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Damn you, Satan. <laughs> it didn't count. Uh, and then he dies, and I just wrote, that lucky bastard gets to leave this movie early. I, I know. His part. <laughs> and he's not going to be called back for part two. So yeah, Right. right. <laughs> well, he might have to uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi in the third one. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. But now we get a special message from Duck Commander. Now, I want to tell you just how low <laughs> so on the Duck goddamn King. cameo ladder we are. Not only have they settled for a a supporting Duck Dynasty character, but for this second cameo, they couldn't even get him to show up. <laughs> right? Yeah. Like he had to, he literally <laughs> phoned in his cameo in this goddamn movie. Wearing the same outfit as before. Yeah, well, like, right. he clearly he was... just did all this the same afternoon. He's like, yes. Look, I got from 3 to 4.30. That's what you got. <laughs> yeah. Work it out. Work it out. I don't care about blocking. I don't care about any of it. I'll just stand in front of a green screen if I have to. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I have ducks to shoot. I'm a very important Batman. We got, a, uh, we got a tweet from Uncle Cy we're going to put up on the board here. <laughs> it's inspirational. What? And, and of course, Duck Commander is there to praise Skippy's efforts. He's like, I hear there's one of them professors oh what with his thought brain thinking and stuff. <laughs> Tried to tell some boys that God was dead. Turned out he wasn't. And then he commands everyone in the audience to spam every person that's ever trusted them with their phone number. What an incredible dick move. Now, did this actually happen to you guys? Did you actually get anybody texting you, God's Not Dead, when this movie no, no, came out? We, we, we texted, we texted Eli. Eli. <laughs> <laughs> On his wedding <laughs> night. <laughs> we figured he, had a, he didn't have anything else to do. No, we, well, we texted him, and Tom didn't know it was his wedding night, and then Tom was like, good. So. <laughs> I figured it doesn't matter what time it hits. He's already finished, yeah. so it's fine. <laughs> oh, shit. And then, yeah. and, and then, I'm like, and also, look, the Muslim girl does this in the movie. She texts everyone she knows. The Chinese kid texts everybody he knows in English that got <laughs> his <intent. laughs> it, it was either that or Mandanese. Uh, Mandanese. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but the Chinese guy's, the dad's phone, it says enter message in English at the bottom. It has <laughs> Arabic numerals for the time <laughs> <Right>. of day. <laughs> And then we get, okay, so this was at once the most disappointing part of the movie and the greatest part of the movie, um, where the, where the African pastor explains like, you know, we all learned something here today. <laughs> <laughs> well, except that dead guy. I love the dead guy. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> there really is a more you know moment at the end, isn't there? Well, and, and that the <laughs> little boy grew up to be. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, and the guy's going like, you know, every, the, the African pastor's like, everything happened today was good because pain, sure, for a minute, but confirmation bias, so squaresies. <laughs> he basically, they have them standing over a man who has just died painfully in the street at a young age, and their lines are, but think of the joy in heaven. How creepy does that make Christians no seem? No shit, man. No shit. 
We were we were just fucking flummoxed over that last scene too. Not only do they have to kill the guy, but then at one point that like inside the fucking whole uh thing you had mentioned that they that that uh chubby duck guy is is saying, Oh well we hear there's a pastor who's or there's a there's a student who's who's really showing it to the professor and you're just like that guy is outside dying. Yeah, right. 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 That right. guy's done <laughs> like fucking God won twice. <laughs> God, not only, God not only won in the room, but he fucked that guy's chicken later on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Christians still mourn their dead. Like, yeah, like, no, not, like no, this guy is like sorry. laying in the street and it's like, well, bully for him. I think I'll go get hit by a car and enjoy some joy too. <laughs> yeah, it's 30 minutes, 30 minutes before they're praying over someone's cancer, not high fiving her. You know, yeah. right? <laughs> oh, you're going to meet Jesus. You're so lucky you have cancer. I wish I had cancer. We're just the newsboys though. They are oh, cancer. Did you guys yeah. know we're in this movie? Newsboys. <laughs> they were, actually, yeah. <laughs> now, of course, the last time we had you guys on, as, as Cecil mentioned, we did Loving the Bad Man, and I know that Cecil was really pissed that we forced him to watch a rape-free movie this time around. <laughs> so I was thinking at the very least we could we could close things off tonight with a raped-themed rating system. Oh, Jesus. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> for, for Cecil. <laughs> Fuck. So, That's good. I like this. So rather than asking where this movie makes you want to stick your thumb, we're going to wrap up with a three-part question. In order for this movie to be good, who would have had to get raped by who, and what would they have had to rape them with? <laughs> oh, Jesus! Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to say the girl with the dragon tattoo rapes Brock Turner. Um, it's, it's, it's completely unrelated to the movie. I just kind of want that to happen in general. Can that be my answer? Sure, why not? Okay. I'm going to go with uh, Colonel Mustard rapes the Muslim <laughs> chick with a cross. <laughs> and and Cecil, rape? I, I I think I think this movie if the if the if crazy if crazy spice blonde girl got raped by the Muslim with a uh, discourse on method. I think <laughs> I would also settle for any C.S. Lewis, too. I mean, <laughs> it's good. You don't want to be overly specific no, on that one. No, you don't no. want to make too many Hard demands. She's got to be in red. She's got to be in red, though. <laughs> she will be when it's over. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, Jesus. I don't. Tom just offended himself. <laughs> <laughs> it happens so much, too. I'm just like, that's not something I say. <laughs> I say that so much. Keep, yeah, keep telling yourself that. So, <laughs> well, congratulations. You have now made it through two of these shows. Uh, so hell should be pretty easy on you in comparison. Um, but of course, if our listeners feel like they're not like done with you quite yet, where can they go to hear more from you? Uh, go to dissonancepod.com. You can find literally all of the stuff about us. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks again. And can't wait to see you guys in Manchester, England at the QED conference, October 14th to the 16th. I'm a total shill. And well, that does it for our review of God's Not Dead. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to tantalize you for Mr. Anna Bosnick's triumphant return. So Heath, tell us what's on deck. The Masked saint oh it's on netflix it's and everything everybody can watch exciting. along yep yep yeah. uh appears to be the story of a vigilante pastor slash lucha libre mexican professional wrestler uh-huh yeah named uh praiser ramon i'm assuming <laughs> and uh the movie seems to think this sport uh the mexican professional wrestling is just as real as christian magic well, which <laughs> is true yeah so yeah, as it turns out that should be fun finally we get back to a full movie of christian movie sportsing <laughs> I'm so excited. I asked Eli, I'm like, dude, we can do it's 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 your day, man. What do you want to do most of all? He's like, wrestling. So <laughs> So with all that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 54 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Tom and Cecil for helping us out tonight, and an equally huge thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to every episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving us a five-star review on iTunes, and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoy this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist and The Skeptocrat, available on iTunes, Stitcher, and wherever else podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. All the music used in this episode was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Evil Drafts on Mars and was used with permission. If you like what you hear, hear more by following links on the show notes for this episode. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions promising to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a breakfast club close. God's not dead, he's surely alive. Never alive. Newsboys. They were in this movie. Were they? Newsboys. 
Kevin Sorbo went on to play the voice of Retro Hercules in the video game called Smite, a gay pirate fight club promoter in Revelation Road, The Black Rider, and Mayor Berman in Piranha Sharks. So that's where his career went after this one. Anna was mortified when she learned why Eli insisted that their honeymoon have a stop-off in Greece. God's not, not dead, dead. He, he was never alive. alive. Text God's your friends. Not dead. He's never alive. Twice. So. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Well, twice collectively. Like, yeah. I mean, Cecil, <laughs> yeah. watched, Cecil watched, watched it twice, twice yeah. and you watched it at not at all. Good. Yeah, there you yeah. go. <laughs> <laughs> He's so on to you. Yeah. I hear God's dead. Is everybody on board with me? <laughs> yes, yes. Wait, no, not. Like... Scrolled it in there. Tricked you. <laughs> I have a very persuasive PowerPoint I will present later on. <laughs> Back home, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So well, he gets super hard. pissed. Sorry, go, go on, on, Heath. No, I'm not going. You All go. Right. <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2016. All rights reserved.